Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the EU match number one, season one of the Community Clash. We have 16 of the top outfits from across the world, eight on the UU and eight on the US, battling it out for extreme in-game rewards and planet side to community acclaim. My name is Steve Volpe78 and I'll be your host this evening. Tonight we have an exciting match prepared for you folks here on Indar. Without any further ado, I'll interview the first gentleman from the NC from Woodman, represented by Darcibius. We've got Rebel Rifles. Darcibius, how you doing? I'm okay, man. I'm okay. <laughs> Excellent. So, hey, you've been, uh, you guys have been around for at least a couple of the games during the preseason. Remind us, uh, viewers, anybody else who's new watching the stream, about you and your outfit. Okay, yes, so uh, we're the Rebel Rifles, we're an NC outfit on the Woodman server. Uh, Rebel Rifles are part of a gaming community called Easy Gaming. Um, we kind of play all sorts, all sorts of different games, but we have a, quite a big um, amount of, we, we have quite a large amount of people that play uh, Planet Side. So yeah, this is why we get to do stuff like this. Alright, and hey, with one loss and one win in the preseason, uh, how have you guys decided to prepare for tonight? Do you guys uh, change some tactics up? Did you guys practice this week? Yeah, we've been putting the practice in this week. Um, the game against KLTV, our first game, uh, we, we won that one, um, which was nice. Uh, the game against the uh, Red October um, didn't go so well. Um, we did. It was a preseason game, so we uh, we were trying some different things out. Um, it kind of backfired, and we got royally done over by the Russians. Which uh, you know, hats off to them. They they played a very very good game. So hopefully we can we, we have learned from that. Um, we've changed some of our tactics up. So uh, yeah, we're ready for them. Hey, live and learn, live and learn. I can definitely understand that, and uh, we uh, totally understand. I mean. Last time when we were playing with you guys, it was uh, on the new Amorish. Everybody was getting used to the new lanes, and so there was a lot of things to uh, find out for the first time. But uh, now you guys are kind of old hats, veterans at this, so uh, good luck to you, and uh, wish you the best during the match. Yeah, Is there anything, there anything else that you'd like to add? Uh, no, just for the, uh, the guys in the foundation, good luck. Um, you know, we're, we're very much looking forward to playing you guys tonight, so uh, yeah, it should be a good game. All right, and here on my left... Let me introduce you guys. This is Fuzz Bucket from the Foundation. He's uh, from the Sarah server. Hey, how you doing, Fuzz? He's uh, disconnected from TeamSpeak, so I'll pretend to be Fuzz until Fuzz is back. So ask me a question. <laughs> hey, Fuzz slash Farah, gentlemen. That's oh, hold uh, on. Farah. There he is. <sighs> Looks like uh, Fuzz has <laughs> just joined us again. How you doing, Fuzz? playing up. I'm fantastic. Hey, well, hey, it's at least it's uh, TeamSpeak playing up and not playing aside. The game that we love that never crashes on us, right? Oh, yeah. So, hey, welcome back and uh, welcome to the EU uh, Community Clash. You guys are playing for the first time tonight. Uh, why don't you tell us a bit about your outfit uh, for all the viewers out there? Uh, yeah, like uh, Foundation is quite a large outfit. I think we might be one of the larger ones competing in Community Clash. No, KOTV's taking part. We're not large. <laughs> um, we just mainly focus on like having fun and like trying to be nice guys and sort of have sort of cool stuff. But some members like Yo Fuzz, who want to take part in Community Clash, so I try to get that happening. Uh, and we're very very excited to make um, our debut on Community Clash. Yeah, that's great stuff. Uh, so have you guys been you know coordinating together, getting uh, training sessions going for tonight? Yeah, we're getting some quality training down. Uh, it's always uh, good fun to have a bit of training, and I know uh, because of training for this, a lot of my guys are a lot more into all this team speak shenanigans. <laughs> Fair enough. You know, I'd love to ask you about some of the things you have planned, but I don't want you to have to give it away for the uh, Rebel guys. Um, one thing I am kind of curious about, though, did you guys try to check out uh, the previous reels of uh, Rebel's performances during the preseason? Yeah, I've, um, some members sent them to me, and uh, I must say, you did fantastically. Um, Cheers, um, even yeah. though you didn't win all your matches, uh, it's quite clear you have got some top quality players. Yeah, I could, quality I could players agree with all you. Well, that's great. Um, and do you think that you found any kind of you know potential weak spots? You know, and... well, I'm not allowed to say that now, am I? <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Well, hey, gentlemen, uh, why don't you rejoin your teams, and uh, we're going to start the match here in a little bit. Thanks for joining me here, and uh, yeah. Cool. While yeah, these uh, guys are. Best of luck to you both. 
Okay, while those guys are back to their teams, I'm going to explain the rules of the game for those of you who have not joined us before. Each match will consist of two 45-minute halves. Each team has 24 players. We are here on the Jaeger decommission server so that none of you viewers out there can come and screw with us. The team at the end of both halves with the most points is going to win the match. If two teams tie, then we head into a death match and uh, we'll decide the victor then. And if we get into that situation, we will explain the rules uh, when that comes up. Capturing a single point base awards the capturing team with two points. Capturing a three point base with, will award the capturing team with three points. Capturing the opposing team's home base rewards the capturing team with five points and it ends the half no matter how much time is left in that half. As you can see, we're here on lovely Indar dry and desolate as ever. What I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to hand it off to our excellent procasters. We've got Klyka and Farah. They're going to uh, lead you guys through the lanes and explain uh, all the great stuff going on in tonight's match. And uh, without any ado, guys, why don't you take it away? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, T. Volpe. I'm Klyka, and welcome and to Farah. all of you. Yeah, and with me is Farah today, and I'm really looking forward to casting this match on you, Farah. On me? Okay, let's go. What? You got the um, preview for Indar, so we can uh, show I everyone. Do. I do. I do have the. I do have the preview for Indar, so uh, we're gonna go right into that. It's a cute little video that someone threw together here. So let's take it away. This is the lane that we're gonna play today between Mao Tech Plant and Rush New Biolab, and away we go. <laughs> And what a wonderful video that was. That was the inner lane that we're going to play on today with Rebel Rifles vs. Foundation. And while I'm zooming away from T. Volpe, the lone Terran on the server, uh, I think we're pretty close to starting, aren't we, Farah? Uh, yes, we're just giving the teams one or two minutes to get finished setting up before we have um, our German Tony call the countdown. Um, by looking at the map, uh, the you can see the lane, uh, perhaps, if uh, Clyke will show it. The Howling Pass is the key base on this lane, if we we're going to talk about this. And uh, the advantage we found in all of the preseason games has always been the team that starts to the north. The Mal push to Howling Pass seems to have a slight advantage over the Rashnu Pass to Howling Pass. But once you're there, the south side always has the advantage if they get Howling Pass. They've got the natural, you know, safe sun respawn locations and pushing to abandon NS offices has always been. Uh, easier than pushing to NS Material Storage. I don't think anyone's actually really successfully pushed to NS Material Storage. Yeah, I haven't seen it either. And I mean, Abandoned NS Offices does have those nice hills to the south, which you can wonderfully set up on, and that is a big advantage to the southern team. Well, and again, air here is going to be probably all important. We are going to have squad beacons this time, guys, so that could be a big difference yep. that we haven't had before. So air might not play as an important role, but when you come from the north, your sunders are exposed. There's big, vast, wide-open desert plains. Uh, there's not very. There's no garages like Esamir to hide your vehicles in, so they just get pounded and destroyed. And if the uh, guys attacking from the south are able to set up on the walls, engineer turrets just have a clear line of fire. And then if you have air power, you can just sneak over the hillside, bombard, and then get out of line of sight for flak. So it's, uh, it'll be interesting to see how the teams perform. But we are playing both sides, so at the halftime we will swap over. Yes, at the halftime we'll have the Vanu go to the north and the NC attack uh, from the south. Which is going to be interesting because, honestly, I think the Vanu are kind of a little... In advantageous in the southern side because the mag riders can really easily get on those hills. So we'll see about that. I mean, I, I'm going to see, or I'm, I'm interested in seeing some mag riders up on those hills, really. Okay, I'm going to show off here, right? Uh, Tony, can we jetzt anfang? 30 Sekunden, bitte. Oh, 30 Sekunden, yeah. That was some very good German for <laughs> There we go. That's <laughs> my German for <laughs> Wonderful, the day. wonderful. Uh, did you awesome. look that up on Google beforehand? Ah, uh, maybe. 
Ach, 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 maybe he speaks like a real German. Anyway, <laughs> people, we are about 20 seconds away from starting this match. Uh, I'm following the NC, by the way, while uh, Farah is in the platoon deeply in, uh, embedded with the Vanu. So I will be seeing the platoon and squad waypoints and so on of the Rebel Rifles. And from that, I can already see that they're going for the towers, Farah. And here goes the match. Oh, we're going. Rebel Rifles um, with a galaxy straight from the start, taking off, entire 10-man uh, galaxy heading for West Pass. Well, they're ahead of Foundation, because Foundation's in Ration and Biolab, and they were actually in the spawn room. Very diligent. I don't think they have a galaxy. I don't know if they're all going to pull all air, but they're running uh, well, to the VB airs and the air base, so they don't have a galaxy. So well, with um, that, Rebel Rifles has already taken this base, because they also just crashed two of their Reavers. They have uh, two Reavers up in the air. Actually, everyone's so jumping out. So they've gone out. for the V-Term, correct? Are they yes. hacking the V-Term? Uh, yes, they are. They're hacking the terminal. They've t they're taking point A. Actually, no, they're not uh, hacking the terminals at all. Well, that's interesting, Where because that going? would make an obvious sense. If the terminals are alive and not being destroyed, you would, with a rush like now that the Reavers, they would drop out, hack, and then pull it asunder. Yeah, now they're doing it, though. Now they're hacking point A. They're taking point C. It's already taken. And point B is being taken right now. So, yeah, West Pass, watch The first scythes have just turned up, but they're coming in stragglers. It's just, oh, maybe he dropped. Yeah, I think he just dropped, yeah, and he's he going to go dropper. for it. Yeah, we've got uh, three Reavers up in the air. We've got um, the Galaxy oh, still hovering. Used a squad beacon. So the Venu have used a squad beacon, the Mozzie drop in the squad beacon, but it's not the best placement. They are exposed in the open plains to the north of the base, but they're going for Charlie. <laughs> oh, nice! The beacons are dropping on the Galaxy. That's awesome. <laughs> I saw that, Anyway, yeah. uh, they're moving into Charlie Point now. Uh, but th I can see that the NC have a uh, squad beacon in the north, so Rebel Rifles have already got much closer respawn. Yeah, point. they also do have a squad beacon up on top of C, so we see some intense fighting now. They've got a Max, Rebel Rifles with an NC Max. Already three Vanu down. That was uh, They were just flanked by a, a lone engineer. Well, this is the out. problem with the Venu coming in, is that they don't... Without having a galaxy, they can't pre-max up, so yep. they're already at a massive disadvantage. We've got a revive grenade from the Vanu right now, though. We've got three Vanu in the uh, C building, four Vanu. They've got some medics with it, but they've uh, the NC has a max. They've got a heavy and an engineer, so I don't think the Vanu can actually get in here, because that max alone is going to take out this entire squad. So, looking at the map, I can see that Alpha Squad for the Foundation is what dropped in with the Squad Beacon, and I'm not sure if that Squad Beacon's still up. And Bravo Squad is taking their very sweet time coming down actually on a Sunderer along the road, of all things. It seems awfully dangerous since it's been pounced on by uh, Rebel Rifle Reavers. Well, right now we've got all the Vanu Red Point C actually taken out. So they're just dead. I think there's a lone, yeah, there's uh, a lone person running. Rebel around. Rifles Liberator just destroyed Bravo Squad Sunder. So there are no squad Sunders. They're going to have to rely on uh, squad beacons now to spawn in. And Rebel Rifles air units are just decimating the Bravo Squad for um, the Foundation, who are just now entering inside the base on the east side. What we're actually seeing here is something which we saw in the very first uh, preseason game of Rebel Rifles. Which is where Rebel Rifles was much, much quicker than the Vanu on the uptake, and they immediately took West Pass, and then they just did not let go of it. So, uh, I feel like they, since they feel very comfortable with this lane, seeing how this is the second time that they play on it, they knew exactly what to do, you know, they've, they've, they have two games under their belt in the preseason, they've played this lane before, and they've seen all of the other matches, they know air power is extremely important, and I feel that Foundation just isn't prepared. I see a lone uh, no, Liberator. The, the thing is, the experience is showing here because Rebel Rifles are pulling four Reavers, one Liberator, and one Battle Galaxy as a spawning and an attack thing. Yeah. And, and we just witnessed a Skyguard, one Skyguard from Bravo Squad from Foundation trying to take on all the enemy air. Yep. It's just not going to work. You need to end mass. And we can already see Foundation are sticking purely to ground, and it's just not going to work. Well, they have a single Liberator up in the sky, but that doesn't help you when you're being attacked by three Reavers and two enemy Liberators. I mean, you, you can be the best Liberator crew that you can be. They've got a second Liberator now, but I feel that Rebel Rifles is actually very, very strong in the air, because uh, I talked to Sibius beforehand, and they told me they have two very dedicated Liberator crews. And I mean, if they are not available, they just crash their Reaver into the enemy Liberator. That works out, too is live free in the NC. But, uh, yeah, they told me they've got some very, very dedicated pilots, especially the uh, Liberator crews. Very dedicated, love to play together, know exactly how to fly, how to use their cannons. So... And for the record, we've actually been given some show notes here. Uh, Wizen and 
Kitarana, is that how you pronounce it? Yep. That's their main Liberator crew, and Badass Elite is the second Liberator pilot they may be having, but I don't see a second Lib for the NC, so they're probably just flying with one for the time being. And now we're looking, it looks quite clear that um, the Foundation have been pushed back to NS Mature Storage. Yes. It doesn't look like there's any threat of Howling Pass, it doesn't look like uh, the Foundation have any squad leaders or any uh, members trying to get to Howling Pass to do like a squad beacon redeploy. Not so, at all. Uh, the, so it is Rebel Rifles Air are just pinning in uh, Foundation at NS Material Storage. So this could be interesting because we might see a match where uh, we go all the way up to Rashnu at this rate. Well, there was actually what happened in the in the very first match of Rebel Rifles, so they know how to push to Rashnu. I'm just a little weirded out what Foundation is actually doing because it seemed very very haphazard just now what they did like they 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 try to bring in a skyguard all alone then they try to pull some sundress where rebel rifles totally on the ball is just you know they're letting the base cap in the background while they're just already at the next base which is how you should do it especially with the super mobile air but i'm really not quite sure how um foundation is going to respond to this because if they keep spawning but they keep spawning Sunders, and they, yeah, they keep know. wanting to get in the Sunders. But there's so much air, even with four guns fully manned, it's going to get destroyed. Yep. They need to. Are they aware that they can use liberators? That they can. No, sorry, not liberators. I'm, galaxies. I'm, I'm not sure. One I mean, galaxy can do it. I we're mean, also or maybe looking. Maybe they have to pull all air. We're also yeah. looking at three basilisks and one walker here. I mean, that is like if you have unlimited certs, if you can put whatever you want onto your gun or onto your Sundera and so on. Uh, you know, you put some anti-air on there because you're getting pounded by air, but right now that's sure. just not happening. Well, it's it's a minute and 40 seconds now until the cap goes through in Howling Pass for Rebel Rifles. And I see barely anybody on the three cap points. If anything, um, Rebel Rifles have got maybe one guy just holding A, B and C at the very most. They've got the AA turrets manned just in case, and they have a Sunder ready to ride up the hill. They've got the AV turrets hacked and ready. So even if by some miracle the Sunderers can make it out of this material and get past the air and get down the road, they have to go through AV turrets and I hear a lot of ifs defense. there, Farah. I hear a lot yeah, of yeah, ifs, lot and of I'm not sure if the Foundation can do those. The best thing you do, I mean, in this scenario, if this was me, is I'm thinking, right, they've got the air, the road is a perilous journey, send one mozzie with stealth and, a, and an ejection seat and a, an infill. And well, let's, let's make it a scythe, but I know what you want, want to say. Well, yes, yeah. yes, sorry, yeah, the, uh, or an ATV stealth uh, with the wraith module. Something to get yourself over there, and then you can, um, and it just needs to be one guy, this needs to be one guy for both squads, it just needs to be one guy, he puts on the beacon, you know, your squad drops in, and then you move one person from your squad into the Bravo squad, and then they put down a beacon. But uh doesn't look like they've got that kind of experience they're trying that, and so we've it's got 30 seconds left on West Pass Watchtower before it's captured. They've got uh, only Alpha squad, squad pretty much on uh, defense duty right now, which they don't even need to, but they also don't need to have them move out because Bravo Squad, which is, seems to be their air squad, is completely pinning down the Foundation, who are now resorting to Burster Maxes with a, a Sundra. A Burster Battle Sundra on the hillside, so that it didn't die, miraculously, so it was repaired, and now they're having lots of AA. I guess they're just setting up a defense for NS material. But, but, and but that's again, fine. again, but I see three Burster Maxes, I see three Burster Maxes, and I don't <laughs> see anyone manning the Sundra. The Foundation just kind of going with really simple well, things. Well, they've sent one Sundra. Their Alpha Squad is going for the base right now, and he's going down to the west, but he's going to be attacked by air. The Bravo Sundra and the uh, Maxes on the roof... And he's you know, down. The, the he's down. The one yeah. didn't even make it to the base. Yeah. But and how? How was he doing, supposed uh, to, you know? Well, this is the thing. How are they going to get through? And The thing is, everyone here on the Bravo Squad that's for the Foundation that's on the hilltop are just going to get picked off by air yeah. one at a time. They're not going to get any kills. And even then, it's a giant waste of resources because if I was Rebel Rifles, I don't need to kill them. I'll just fly around them, drop yeah. them, drop them. All you got to do is just hold this base, fly around, kill uh, whatever you galaxy, can with your Liberators. If you see the NC Galaxy is actually flying around the enemy air, it's going to come from behind where they don't have an anti-air angle, and this is going to drop the squad on the next capture point. Hey, they totally don't know. Right now. <laughs> they don't even care about it. flying high. They're just going in low. Uh, by the but way, a quick update: oh, since wow. they took West Pass Watchtower by now, it is two zero. As uh, sorry, it is three zero for Rebel Rifles now, because that was so, a three point base, and they're capturing 
and it's yeah, material storage. Okay. There's, no an there's, there's no defense. There's no defense. There's no defense. No defense. All of the defense from the foundation is out there. Like I'm looking at it right now from a perfect angle. And this is the problem. They're shooting at the air. The foundation just so <sighs> focused on the air, they're totally forgetting that. Hey, there are capture points. They're on the ground. We should really do something here, guys. Right. So one thing you can do here is a form of leapfrogging if you're on the defensive back foot. If you can't get to the base, you wait till the enemy clears out. You keep you half of your team on your cap point, making sure it get cap get captured, and then your other team leapfrogs in with a squad beacon and then attacks and gets a capture point on Howling Paths. That means the defenders are off foot and then you can attack. But they didn't even have anyone on the cap point to prevent that. Yeah, now they're just spawning in the spawn room, pulling, I guess, a max or two, trying to get in here, but we've got Burster well, Maxes. They have burster maxes we've got Burster Maxes well, no. engaging in close combat right now. I mean, I like to see that kind of stuff because, you know, it makes for good watching. And he, mean, he literally just killed that man. Like, with bursters. But we still, and this is so crazy to they're me. They're still defending yep, the AA. They're, they're, they're still not defending. The base. Yes, they're not. That's they're like just 10 guys. Yep, uh, there's, I, I, there's 10 guys of the VS just sitting there doing burster maxes. It's three burster maxes, multiple medics, multiple engineers, and a Sundra. And they're not even noticing that the base behind them is getting captured. Right, it's so already half done. The Foundation's Alpha Squad is trying to push on the capture point. But the problem is, Rebel Rifles have got at least two kill zones, all looking at the corner that they're running around. And then on top of that, they have air behind the base, or they did have air for me before they got shot down, just shooting down on them. And also, the vehicle terminal's been uh, hacked. It's NC, which means uh, they did temporarily pull it asunder before it was killed off. Mm. But there's nothing stopping getting another one. I mean, and I don't really see, honestly, I'm just going to make the worst pun here right now. But I'm not seeing a good gameplay foundation from the foundation. Yeah. Because it's like... Rebel Rifles is keeping together. They seem to have a good have squad a the composition. The they've, got, they've got two Maxes. They've got the rest of the squad. They've got medics. They've got their heavies. They've got everything. This is the first the time that I actually the cap point. There's a, yeah, there's a light I see assault him. I see him, with yeah. the squad beacon. Yeah, it's just wonderful. dodging back and forth for the anti-air But I see um, it's, it's wonderful because this is the first time right now that Foundation is actually doing a squad push. But the problem is they're going in between two buildings. Both of those buildings have NC of them. Both of them have NC Max. Oh, there's in an them. infiltrator behind those crates as well. Yep. He's picking off a bunch of them. Yeah, so the problem is there's three kill zones, not to mention when they finally get to the cap zone area. There's an engineer turret and more death windows from the uh, double building with the antenna on the top. Honestly, this is probably the part where the foundation should just pull back from the oh, space because they're not taking. Oh, lightnings! They're I, the I saw they're four, them, four but guard what guard kind guard. of lightnings? We've got three sky, four sky guards. Yeah, the four sky guards. Four all sky, sky guards. guards. So you have an anti-air group at what is their platoon waypoint, which is looking really fast, and then you have another anti-air group at the ammo tower, and then you have a couple of stragglers trying to recapture the waypoint. I mean, like, hmm. hmm. I when mean, this really base is this base is lost. Then. I do not see the foundation doing a one-minute clutch, especially not when half of your forces are on the hill. That is something that, like, I do not understand this position right now. I understand that they've probably heard a lot of bitching about, you know, like, oh, air is very strong. Like, you need to be on top of the air game. You need to have air defenses. But you can't do it like this. You can't put like half of your entire forces into AA du uh, duty and then put the, it the into the one time no. when. The one time when you can maybe go heavy air is when, um, if, if you're attacking, like if, if, for example, if the foundation was attacking this base and they put lots of air around the cat point, that would work because you're fending off enemy air and you're on the attack. Yep. And you can use buildings as cover if you we need to. We do have a nice push them. from the foundation on the point right now. Oh, yes, By the way, they the have 10 again. seconds. If they just, but but what are they doing? Like they have 10 they seconds. The they're going they're, they're the not building. rushing they the, need point. To go for the point. Yeah, yeah, they're flanking. They're flanking. They're being like tactical. Oh, no. They're being very tactical here. They're going for the point, but it's not. Um, oh, right, that, got one wait, 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 wait! He's, he's doing it. They're close. They're close. Oh, that was three seconds. That was three seconds away from being capped. And here they go. They took it. They took it. They took it. Yeah, but the question's for how long. They've been pushed back now to someone's central point. NC, yeah, the Sky Guards are going to help. NC Bravo Squad, by the way, coming in with multiple tanks and weapons. Liberators up above. So the Alpha Squad that was just got killed off, I'm guessing, for NC, they can just draw the beacon straight back in. Oh, they're the already here. They're up. already back. Yes, they are already back. I can see the Vanguard. That Vanguard is going to have a lovely meal when he gets the Sky Guards because no one from Foundation has noticed the Vanguard driving up the road. He's just going to be like, Hi, guys. How are you doing? And he's just gonna nope. eat them all apart. And then here it comes, he's about to come around the corner. This is this is gonna be entertaining to watch. Don't yeah, that poor Skyguard is uh, not gonna look very <laughs> well. Here comes number one. 
It is only a 1-1 one, one Vanguard, though. Which I'm a little weirded out by, because honestly, I would go 2-2 two, tanks. Is two he tanks. using heat, Shell? He's not using AP. Uh, he might be using heat, I'm not sure. Anyway, we still we have the point back in Foundation, so uh, we actually... They oh, wow. showed us something new. They showed us something Four new here. Four Sky Guards are going to beat the Sunder, uh, sorry, the Vanguard at this rate because he's smoking. Yes. He <laughs> well, he's got a buddy coming up the road. Yes, that. that's what you get for having a Vanguard with an anti air on top that's not even, uh, that doesn't even he have a gunner. He needs a gunner to back him up. He yeah. needs a gunner, yes. You can't just it's drive smart in a single because Vanguard. Sky Guards are taking turns. Oh, wow, they killed him. Alright, the second Sunder. The second Sunder, he's got a gunner. He's got the Enforcer and yep. he has AP on the top. He's going to He's got him. air support too. Since the Sky Guards are focusing on the tanks to save their lives, yep, the air can come in yeah. and take them out. But I think we missed a very big thing here, and that is that the Foundation actually proved us wrong. They managed to defend this space. Because it seems that while a Rebel Rifle still has that Alpha spawn beacon up on the antenna, uh, I, I, I take it that they're actually they waiting to drop in at the, the same time. The yep, I think Possibly, they're all waiting yeah. to drop in the same time, because I can't see them not utilizing that spawn beacon. Well, they've set up another anti-air forward group, you know, on the hillside. Yeah, suppressing yeah. Um, Rebel Rifles here. And I guess Rebel that Rifles works. pulling a galaxy, or ha using a galaxy at West Pass Watchtower right now, by the way. Foundation still going with the anti air on that hill, but it's just not doing anything. It's just kind of there, well, keeping people I, I occupied. I guess if, you, if you're thinking uh, at long run, maybe the cutting losses, I mean, if they can hold here and prevent NS material from being uh, captured, right? Th this is naturally. Um, then they have an advantage. The next round, all they need to do is take Helen Pass and one more base and they we win. We do have the Galaxy coming in right now, by the way. There are nine people from Alpha Squad oh, in that Galaxy. He's coming around the edge. Yep, he's coming around the edge. He's flying he's at it. The AA sees well. him. But of course, the Galaxy doesn't he's care making, about that. He's the got AA. full flak. He's going to yep. survive. He's, he doesn't care about that. That's just Bruce from Exus. Oh, it did Ooh, crash. Wow. But some of them dropped. Yeah, no one. everybody dropped. No one died. But they've got two Vanguards taking care of the South. And they're taking the point again now. Because Foundation moved all of their Three guys out. Yep, three vanguards. Three vanguards now, yeah. Foundation just moved all of their infantry out because they weren't defending. Like the base wasn't even fully capped back yet, and they weren't properly defending because again they were too focused on A. By the way, wonderful tower. play from Rebel Rifles here. Two in engineer anti infantry turrets up on that uh, roof in a perfect angle that the spawn room can't shoot them, and they can shoot anybody who's coming at them. But they've also got a lasher. <laughs> Foundation with a lasher heavy assault on top of the uh, antenna. Wonderful. So, um, some of the Rebel Rifles, two of the Vanguards, have actually moved up to Rashnu Tower as a sort of uh, preventing reinforcements by vehicles from Rashnu Biolab. Makes sense. Which is to interesting. Me. Um, yeah, stopping off it, because it, it's risky to pull from the V terminal here, and it, it prevents them from like grouping up uh, further back. We've got uh, two Vanu Liberators coming in now. And an NC Liberator who's, uh, I think, going to move in close to try and take them out. Those Liberators is Shredder. Shredder it's Liberator. Shredder with the taking out the those. Vanguard there. Taking out that Vanguard. Yep, his shield's now popped, so... Yeah, but nah, two, Shredder, two Shredder Liberators are no, taking No, he's not going to survive. Yeah, he's, he's down, he's down. Well, uh, i am I got to say that, you know, as, as skeptical as I was, the Foundation's mass air, air tactic kind of it stalled Rebel Rifles. Rebel Rifles were storming ahead. And then they worked. I mean, to an extent. However, yep. the core element here is the infantry fighting. They are losing their second base again. Well, we, we do have cool. another push. It's the same push they've done before. They've got three maxes. They're moving in, I can but see I don't. That. So they've moved Bravo yeah, I don't think I Rebel think Rifles is taking is, is having any more of this. Like they know about it. They know about the push. They've got their oh, maxes in the C4. building. They're both pushing, I think, at the same time. Yeah, they have. So yep. the problem then Rebel Rifles are having is that they are only using one squad for, uh, you know, infantry attacking. And it looks like they've got most of the second squad in air or, you know, support elements. So when the Foundation comes together and uses both squads to take a point, they can grab it. And they're doing it right. They're not running back immediately. They decide, right, two-minute marker, one-minute marker, we all attack at the same time. Grab the point back, then redeploy, you know, back to where we were before. And all this, all this vehicles uh, that um, Rebel Rifles have, I can see three, maybe four yep. Vanguards. All of the, the Rebel lightning. Rifles are now kicked out of the base. They only have Bravo Squad, the vehicle squad to the south, with uh, some Vanguards and a, a Sky Guard, actually. 
And I take it that they're going to bring in Alpha Squad again soon, so... Well, if I was one of those vanguards, I'd like to try and get around the base, because I know it's possible, and get that Sundra at the spawn building area, prevent them from deploying on the hillside looking down on Highland Pass, and if I was Rebel Rifles, I wouldn't necessarily go for the cat point, I'd be forcing the Venu into their spawn building and keeping them pinned in the spawn building, preventing them from doing proper AA, letting your air assets come into the fight. I am, I am a little weirded out by Foundation actually winning the infantry fights though. I mean, I know they brought some maxes by DNC, like Rebel Rifles had that too, and from what I've seen uh, from the player stats and so on, the Rebel Rifles infantry players are actually quite good. Like, they've got people who have tons of Araxium weapons, they seem to have people who know perfectly how to play the infantry role, but for some reason Foundation manages to push them out a second time. Well, they're outnumbered the two to one, and they're being flanked from two, if not three, directions. So it, it stretches the um, Rebel Rifles infantry. Plus, the vehicles can't assist Rebel Rifles because it's deeper in the base, and the air units simply aren't there. Yeah, the air units currently are still at the tower, not really helping at NS material storage, but we've got uh, three Sunderers from Rebel Rifles moving in across the road. Now, because yeah, I guess they like didn't the want to. Rifles are, uh, yeah, they're the kind of fed up with the whole spawn off. beacons. Yeah, they're they're killed. Right, so the the last of the fa fa foundation's uh, air assets are killed off. They just killed that yeah. last liberator. I don't, <laughs> I don't understand why, but one of the rebel rifles vanguards is just killing off all the tower turrets. They're you know in preparation at Rashni Watchtower. Yeah. So. Rebel Rifles, they're fully convinced we are getting this base, and they're already so confident Can you blame them? the next base. Can you blame them? Oh, no, them? but they need to get the job done. But, well, I mean, that's the thing, though. Well, at, at first, I did see the thunder. It's amazing. The, uh, it's amazing. Oh, it's on its side. It's going to blow up. Yeah, it's blowing up. It, does, oh, it, no, did, have a, it did have a uh, Vortex uh, and PS Max next to it, too. Well, they've got a second one that's charged up. Um, so, I mean... It depends what the no deploy zone is because we can't actually see that with our own sunders. No, sadly, but I think it's pretty large on this base. Actually, they can't move. So in long that as far. you can keep, um, as long as you're willing to keep one guy in, maybe the platoon leader who can, or, or some other guy, you just move back and forth. You can, you know, spawn in your whole team. But it doesn't look like it's going to live long. It looks like it's about to be C forward. Yeah, there was. Yep. But they do have one further to the south. Uh, which they're leaving completely unguarded, but that's going to be their staging point. Now, problem is, of course, that it being to the south, there is a very, very large death zone that they have to walk yeah. through, where the foundation well, the gets set platoon, up in the building. Exactly. The so. entire platoon for foundation is set up in the two buildings, and they're essentially forming a circle. They're not focusing too much in one area. We've got so a single NC Liberator in running into the, into the big group of foundation now, by the way. This must be uh, one of the really good infantry players. Well, he just didn't really achieve all that much, but they did tell me that they have a lot of very good infiltrators, so maybe Red Rifle mm. is going to take... Uh, well, I don't no see that. any um, spawn uh, vehicle... Oh, wait, no, there is. There is a Sunder for the Red Rifles. It's, it's much further back towards Rashnu, hiding by the hill, way behind the uh, uh, ammo tower. So they have got a spawn point, and they can't push in, so maybe... You know, Rebel Rifles decided we'll just push on foot now as a platoon with some of our AR assets kind of pinning them in the spawn room. And that works just fine, but they need to make it work. They need to bring more than just one squad, you know, to push back uh, the foundation. Well, Rebel Rifles does have air superiority right now, and I mean, they've got a Reaver circling and while the air is attacking. I mean, well, they, this is a textbook attack right building. now, Farah. This is a textbook attack. They've got the air circling. They're currently shelling the, the enemy infantry Max while their right. infantry... They, yeah, they are, but that's what they got the air for. It, I just don't understand why they are moving through the, uh, through the building. Like, if you have air support, why are you moving through the building where you have to get close to the Max? Well, it's, it's good cover past. when you want to go for the point, I guess. And they don't want to get flanked from behind when they go for the cat point. Uh, but I am surprised that they're not bringing their own maxes because NC maxes in close proximity are fairly powerful. They and did already pull a lot of maxes. Maybe oh, they don't have what? that many infantry. This resources could be a left. problem for Foundation because they just pulled three, if not four, maxes from their spawn building, but they're all anti air. So that's not going to help. You know what we totally missed? You know what we totally missed? West Pass Watchtower being capped by Foundation. Point B taken by Foundation, point C is being captured back to NC right now, but that point B is still not being taken back, even though they've got their air squads there, they cannot actually take the next base. So they have to take point B back before they can do anything at um, NS Material Storage. It's still safe. Oh, you're referring to Highland Pass Bravo Point. Nope. That's great. That's another thing yeah, we can do. And this happens in some of the um, preseason games. Uh, it was more so when 
because if you look at the bases, you can see the NS material storage is significantly easier to defend than, say, abandoned NS offices, which is the next one along to the north after Highland Paths. However, one tactic you can use is to keep sending infiltrators with the new, uh, you know, the new, I think, Stalker? Hunter? Remind me here, which one is the stalker. one that... Stalker. Stalker. Yeah, the new Stalker cloak. You grab a point when yep. it's critical, flip the point, and then you run away and you hide. And then, and basically, the platoon leader says, Red, do it again. And then hides. And then yep. that way, you constantly deny the Okay, point Rebel Rifles, by the way, now secured West Pass Watchtower, but they don't really have a foothold at NS Material Storage anymore. Well, they do have, like, a few people in that building, but I don't think they can actually take it, because uh, Foundation is in that building, and they're taking out a lot of them. Like, a lot of them. Again, no maxes from the uh, NC at all. One max in here could have done something. That was a really good play by the EZ Foundation. They may be uh, three points behind right now, but they're not giving up the second base. This is pretty much the fiercest defense of a base that I've seen so far in, uh, in the preseason games and, of course, in the Community Clash. Rebel well, Rifles they've still they've with air advantage. support. They still have the air advantage. How uh, is Rebel Rifles? How is Rebel Rifles not taking these bases when they have well, full-on control of the air? They've got liberators. Yeah, they've got reavers. Well, yeah, I, I do. I mean, is, Foundation is standing so around effective. in the open. They're standing around yeah. in the open. They're not really in the buildings. I mean, Rebel Rifles. You can see it again. They're just pushing through the building. The big building, which should be where Foundation is defending the point from, is completely in the hands of the NC. Every oh, single wow. time. Oh wow! Two Reavers just wrapped each other. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, the one strength that they're going to try and do is keep um, Foundation pinned in the spot room, and it looks like they're kind of doing that now. Um, more so than they have at any point in the match. But this base, you have to understand, that is much easier to defend. The buildings are far more generous and the terrain is more generous to the defenders yep. than uh, on the northern lane. And it looks like uh, Rebel Rifles have captured the point, plus they have their yeah, air they have now, right? They have their own maxes now and you can already tell that the push is that much stronger because of it. But here comes the foundation. They're amassing uh, forces again at the spawn room, but they're also pulling it's burster maxes. Air maxes. Yeah, they're pulling yeah. burster maxes again. And those burster maxes, they don't even seem to really change their weapons. They're just going for it. They're well, just the saying we need to get rid of the reavers. Yeah, uh, and the, the point is that now the rebel rifles air uh, units, they can just pop over the ridge line, do an attack essentially yep. on the spawn room doors, and then get out of the way. Whereas before, it was much more perilous to get closer to the base. Yep. The problem Foundation faces now, right now, is that uh, it doesn't matter that Rebel Rifles has that air up right now, because all you're doing with the Burster Maxes is you're shooting at a Reaver, the Reaver is going to go like, oh well, that tickles, I'm going to nope. move away. But uh, they need to focus more on the infantry right now, and they're not. So right now we see Foundation has brought in three Skyguards and a Mag Rider, two Mag Riders. It looks like they've killed off Rebel Rifles' Sundra. Yes, they have. Uh, so the question of spot resupply, it shouldn't be a matter. With plenty of squad beacons and squad leader rotations, there's no reason why Rebel Rifles should lose this base. Yeah. Funny thing, by the way, Rebel Rifles air moved away from the tower for just one minute and it immediately Foundation is able to pull vehicles. So that, that air beforehand, keeping those uh, tanks and the other two vanguards there, uh, keeping the tanks in the tower was uh, pretty helpful. Well, the Sky Guards also for the uh, Foundation are on an elevated ridgeline leading yeah. up to Rashnu, giving really But do you good see that Liberator flanking them? Do you see the Liberator coming in from the south? There's an NC Liberator coming in from the south. He's going to pop up behind the Sky <laughs> oh, yes. Guards. Do you see that? I do. Do you see that? Yeah, look yeah. at that. Look at it. Look, look he, how he close just, he's, he's flying. Oh, he's doing it. And he's like, oh, they're all looking in the wrong direction. Well, here I go with my Tank Buster. Look at that. In the back of the lightning, boom, he blows up. And you're going to use the Dalton on the second one? He is. The thing is, what does he do now? Does he turn around? Does he fly away? Nope, he just flies close. He just flies, yeah, flies through the road. Down and underneath, yeah. yeah. And here comes another Liberator doing the exact same thing. You see that? And that's what I was talking about. Two very dedicated Liberator cl crews. One Skyguard remaining. Here comes the second Liberator. He's, uh, he's already he's killed just up here. one Skyguard. Yeah, he's already killed one. And, uh, he's using his Dalton more than his nose gun. Yep. Because he didn't come in as close as the other one. But that Skyguard is down, I mean. There's a furious firefight going on the cap point right now. They've got one max on A, but it looks like Rebel Rifles have been using the squad beacons to get on top of the roof of the adjacent buildings. They do, uh, yeah. They do really like, like those rooftops. It. And uh, the Liberators now are pounding in, uh, Rebel Rifle Liberators are pounding into uh, the Foundation's maxes and infantry. 
that are in the open. Uh, it looks like Foundation has the um, double building with the antenna on the roof. They do have it, yeah. They're down here, they're in the bottom floor, they've got two maxes. Couple of maxes, couple of yeah. infantry, yeah. Uh, but they can't push out from there, we've got rebel oh, rifles. Oh, they get flanked from behind, there. inside the buildings, a heavy assault behind the maxes on the ground floor. Yep. Laying into them. Well, but they found him what out, and they're coming up there. Grenade bandolier and AV nades. If he had grenade bandolier and anti-vehicle grenades, he could have mopped up the entire Venu force in the ground. Yeah, but there's only one VS Max in there, and uh, they don't really care about that much. Twenty seconds till base cap. Are they going to do another clutch? I think they lost too many forces just now. No, they they're don't. They're trying have anyone, anyone it. They're trying the it, but they're just. Uh, they have a Max, very ballsy on the point, but he can't flip it. Yeah, those liberators and reavers are just pounding into them as they come out of the spawn room. Right. With that. Now, I take, I declare calling. NS Material storage uh, taken for the NC right now. And with that we've got Rebel Rifles, two points for that capture. So we got so a 5-0 five five yeah. to 0 for Rebel Rifles in this first match. Heated fight. Heated fight. Do you so think uh, Foundation can take that back? No. No. They've lost it. I mean... They haven't shown me the level of skill, organization, and aggression to take a base. They can defend they, the base. They defended it two times. Defend. They, they yeah, took that point base, back two times. Yeah, but understand, uh, they're, they're good at reactionary, but this base is naturally easy to defend. So I'm not, not I'm trying to take anything against them, but this was an easy base to defend. Show me them defending a hard base to defend, pulling that off, and I'll be impressed. But what I'm more interested in here in Rebel Rifles is they prepped Rashnu Tower, and they're racing over there. But what I would like to have seen is the cap point flipping the instant that the previous base just went yes, through. Yes, I agree with that. One single infiltrator just sitting there on a rock. With a squad beacon. With squad this, beacon with ready to go, beacon, yeah. and a cap point, and then you just bring in half the platoon instantly. You flip the point, it's yours. Then you bring in the second platoon, whether it's in vehicles, sunders, or whatever. Well, here they come in with their air, as always, circling the tower. Lots and lots of air. They've got uh, a lightning here, too. Foundation seems to already be uh, defending, though. But still, they've got no one on the ground. The Rebel Rifles is uh, still... I think Alpha Squad is just the ground squad, and but they're very, very slow. We got one NC Lightning to the uh, yeah. north of the cat point. Rebel Rifles Alpha Squad still defending uh, NS Materials. There's storage. one uh, engineer. One engineer is at the cat point. Now he's going to put down a beacon, or is he just going to run it? I think he's just running around the cat point. We've at got a galaxy, by the way, now. We've got a galaxy for the NC flying towards the tower, and I feel Fair that... Enough. I feel that what they're doing is, since this is an Alpha Squad galaxy, I bet that all of the Alpha Squad guys are redeploying right now and they're just going to jump straight into the galaxy and jump out. Yeah. Of they may even have some maxes yeah, that they picked up from the previous base, but we'll let's see the drop. Yep, here it happens. Right. Here it happens. It's He's flying a little bit off to the wrong location, yeah. but there you go. Anyway, they've got Alpha Squad on it. Alpha Squad redeployed. They all dropped out of the galaxy and they've taken the point, so... Well, there's definitely this. Now, this base is different. This one is a lot harder to defend simply because the tower capture point. There is a long run distance from the spawn room to the capture building. It's a lot easier for the air to uh, pick off, and the, given the, the nature of the terrain, it's not as easy for the defenders to get good line of sight on their anti-air guns. Yep. It's very easy for you to hide around and pick off. Now, Farah, tell so me, I, I see and see on the point. I see and see in the air. Where's the foundation? I don't see any Vanu right now. Well. They're all inside the tower. I can see them all in the spawn building on the minimap. If that was to look in the greater... Well, this base is already half captured and they're still sitting in the tower. What are they doing? I mean, they've got two uh, squads okay. to work with here. They actually... Well, we need, to, we need to have to talk about this because some of them are actually pulling scythes from Crimson Bluff Tower, which is off the lane. Pulling oh, air oh, forces. Oh, 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 what? Yep. Forbidden. What? It's, uh, you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to be fighting on the uh, lanes. German Tony, could we get a quick system broadcast, please, saying that the Foundation gets a yellow card for using off-lane bases? I'm just using my, my my mental German powers here. Yeah, because it looks like they're they're spawning at some of their numbers are spawning and pulling sides yeah. definitely from yes. the Crimson Bluff yes, Tower. Yes, I see it. Yes, I see it. This but then again, very sad that we're rules, seeing this. Very sad. The that we're point is, this. they might not be aware of the rules. I mean, in previous oh, they have times, to be. They have to be they, aware. You of have the to rules. be okay with the rules. Don't get me wrong. It's a competition. You need to know the rules. But at the same time, maybe not everyone knows the rules. But it's your leadership's responsibility to make sure everyone follows them. Yeah, uh, Tony, please another broadcast where you just make it clear to do not use bases off of the lane. Just mentioned that they need to use bases on lanes and not Crimson Bluff Tower. Crimson Bluff Tower is not on lanes, so they should be pulling yes. vehicles from it. Yes. They can pull vehicles from Rational Biolab, they can pull it from the Watchtower, 
and if they want to, they can pull it from their warp gate. Yep. Anything else is While we were looking at this transgression, by the way, Foundation with a, a max and two people actually managed to take the point back at the tower very, very close before it was captured. But the NC pushing yeah. in again with way too many forces for the foundation oh, to defend. Yeah, they just got picked from behind uh, yeah. on the small staircase, and they've got infantry on the ground. Well, they have. I mean, Rebel Rifles has like uh, an entire. Well, squad Rebel here Rifles. They yeah, I mean, their squad composition. If we look at this, they've got like, two or three medics, a bunch of engineers, a turret, and uh, an AV Max. The AV Max is probably the way to go because you just want to kill off the enemy Maxes. And if you were going to Max, what equipment setup would you have, out of curiosity? Uh, if I was setting up a Max to go to a capture point? Yeah, to defend. Um, if I was a Vanu to defend, uh, I would probably go... Honestly, I wouldn't go with blue shifts. But uh, since I know that the capture points are all really, you know, like in the building, I would go with the, uh, the larger magazine ones because I just want to keep shooting and shooting and shooting. And... Um, I probably wouldn't take charge. Honestly, I would probably take the the nerfed Zoe for this one. Like I really? would just yes, I would use the nerfed Zoe because I know that I'm defending a close combat point. Armor kinetic. Really? Because yes, I, I, my impersonation is that although kinetic's great in pug fights, when you're doing organized fights, the amount of AV grenades, standard grenades, rockets from heavies, and other AV maxes, I would take flak. I'm not sure about that. I honestly feel there's more explosive span going on like in a pug because um, a lot of the times when you're doing these coordinated pushes you already have people oh, of your so squad pushing in the room. In now. Sorry to cut you off. Foundation's making the push now. All of the entire platoon's yeah, going I in, but Rebel it. Rifle's air is just pounding I into them it. already. Yeah, they're not taking out anybody though. We've actually got Burster Maxes in here too. Yeah, but they're doing, they're, they're doing it. They're going in. So this is going to be interesting because the Rebel Rifles hold the uh, top stairs. So and they do hold them, and Foundation had no idea. They're just rushing up those stairs. All of their medics rushing just rushing in. Were there any conch grenades thrown by? No, there, I didn't see any conch grenades. Yeah. I see massive explosions, but revived grenades. They've got tons of medics. Medics are just reviving everything, but Rebel Rifles is just killing them as they get shields, back up. They've got they've got engineer turrets, and their heavy assaults are throwing their consumables. The point is captured, grenades. though. Rebel Rifles just sitting yeah, on the, the stairs. on the lower ground. You, yeah, you can't defend the point. The you can't defend... Well, are they really pushing down? I don't see any pushes. I see Foundation actually having all of their people up. I see a lot of Rebel Rifles dying because they don't seem to have as many uh, medics. They don't seem to have as actually, many medics. they don't medics have as many medics. people. This or is, just this is as many a full platoon yeah. attacking a single squad here. So they're holding the top quite comfortably from what I can see. Yeah, so... It's, it's, a, it's a false sense of what's going on. They hold the top, they lose the cap point. They don't care. Hold the top, kill off the enemy maxes, kill off the enemy infantry, spawn the dead bodies so they can't get raised. But they're taking the point uh, back. They've actually managed to defend the point. That yep, foundation, that's all they would. Yeah, that foundation attack sadly failed. But they did get the point. They got in real fast. Uh, the problem was they couldn't get up the back stairs. If they had got some maxes that just pushed up the back stairs, they could have flanked behind the turrets, taken out the medics and the engineers there, and but the, the rebel rifles would have just crushed. The air wouldn't allowed it. They had to get the short. They were already in the building, place. though. I mean, the yeah, air they were in the building in the front. But the front is it's a longer run to get in from the double doors in the back if you're very foundation. Very true. Very true. And the rebel rifles have got a double sunder set up incredibly close to the cat building. Yep. One is an engineer, and one is what I can only assume is maximum uh, mine guard. So uh, it's it's difficult to take out. And their you know reinforcement route is really short. Actually, no mine guard uh, on uh, any of those sunders. It's actually uh, maximum blockade armor. Oh yeah, blockade armor, composite blockade. Yep. Well, that's fair enough. And so it it can be mined if someone if they spot it and are so inclined. But how long have we got left in this base? Eleven seconds. Uh, yeah, it's not gonna eleven happen. seconds. No, it's that not push was it. It's not gonna happen. So we're actually gonna be going into the Russian bio lab here. Possible. The time probably isn't gonna permit it because I know. The 10 minute warning was offered, but that was some minutes ago. They'd need to there be was really the 20 quick minute warning, points. actually. There was the 20 no, the minute, 10 minute warning. And they're already, uh, they're already taking the capture points on the bio lab right now. They've, they've done what we were talking about. They have an infiltrator in here who's flipping A. If he can manage to take out this guy, yes, he does. So this time they actually are probably uh, bunny hop. Yeah, they are. Yes, it's good they stuff. have probably oh, bunny hop. Oh, they have the galaxy over one of the air pads, so they can actually oh, deploy hit. instantly just and drop the galaxy. Although. <laughs> <laughs> they, they they can um, use the teleporter, they can use the jump pad, so they don't yep. actually need to spawn in on their galaxy. 
Well, they're using the jump pad right now. I see uh, a few rebel rifles. Yep, I see almost all of the rebel rifles just using the jump pad, jumping in over here, heading straight for. So point that eight. infiltrator has hacked both the air pads as well. They're now he NC, has. so there's no yep. air. They can only pull air now officially from the warp gate. That lone and infiltrator was in this bio lab for a few minutes and just setting up the whole attack because they knew that they were keeping that tower. Apart from that one sure. attack by the foundation, there was never any chance for them to defend the tower at any point. Right, so right now I see a couple of stragglers defending A. The um, foundation are spread out almost in a kind of a thin line between A and Bravo yep. and their spawn building. We've got point C very comfortably taken by a single NC soldier. Uh, there seems to be a fight going on at point B, like a bigger fight, with most of the foundation going around there, uh, trying to defend that point. There's a lot of claymores being deployed, and the SEU generator's been armed. Well, and can they defend it? I mean, they seem to have... Uh, foundation has their forces close to the generator, so I, I take it that they're going to be able to defend it. If well, this is actually, actually interesting because... There are a lot, and I must stress, a lot of claymores in Rashni Bio Lab by the VS. So I think before this match started, lots of claymores were deployed yeah. as a sort of prerequisite thing before they started. We've got playing. a big push by the Foundation coming now onto the middle, onto they're the They're at the SU Gen, they're going for yeah, the generator. They're going for the gen. They have to go for the generator. I mean, they have to go in there, they have to stop the generator from dying. Got a little max battle going on here. Lots He's running away. <laughs> but what are the they doing? Why, why is the Foundation just sitting? Foundation is just kind of sitting I don't there, understand they're not why pushing. They they're went for the pushing. generator, got halfway there and said, you know what, let's just stay here and get shot at. Yep. That's maybe not their mentality, but that's exactly what they just did. And they have to under understand, that SEU generator shield does not stop incoming fire. Nope, it, it doesn't. doesn't stop them hitting and, you. And not so just that, why do you defend the second objective in a line instead of going for the generator where you still had one and a half minutes to stop it from actually yeah, giving you access well, to the SEU? It's got 40 seconds there. They really should be pushing up and taking back uh, Bravo. Bravo and Charlie. But it looks like they're just fighting over A, so Rebel Rifles are doing a really good job at holding all three points. They could get a clean win here, it's only 60 seconds to go. Yep. And in those 60 seconds, I mean, we know what's going to happen here, and that is going to be the end of the match. Very quickly and very dirty. And Bravo Squad now, by the way, this is uh, Rebel Rifles Bravo Squad, the air squad that we've seen all game, is now defending the generators with their maxes and their infantry, while Alpha Squad is taking care of the Northern spawn room for the Foundation, so I don't see the Foundation coming out of this. They, they, they no. can't really split They've up taken, properly. They can't split the up properly. The thing is, by looking at Foundation, the both squads are merged. The Bravo and Alpha, they're, 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 they're half are at one side and half at the other side. They're not actually in separate squad setups here, so I wonder what their kind of organization is. They have taken Charlie back, and it looks as if they've moved more to the south, but it also looks like they've all been picked off, and they're all dead on Charlie. Well, this is the point. This is the point where Bravo Squad at po Charlie at point C is probably going to go just secure that point and then just go straight for and the. They're SCD. losing Charlie now. They've all been killed off. Yep. Uh, so I, I can only see the Rebel Rifles are showing superior infantry play now in a level playing field when. Because before, it's always been two squads against one against Rebel Rifles. But now that you've got two squads of Rebel Rifles yeah. against two squads of Foundation, yeah, Rebel the Rifles infantry, are just The infantry skill of Rebel Rifles in this, like the individual skill of their infantry players, is and, and, and well, that's something you can see when you look at the stats. The individual skill it is matters. ahead of the Foundation. Yeah, the it individual is ahead skill of matters, the but what more matters more is how well you work. There we go, the game's over. It's yeah. How well you work as a cohesive unit is what yeah. I'm trying to get at. And I just so ranked up to Bell Rank 2. But yeah, congratulations, <laughs> congratulations to Rebel Rifles with that. That was the first half time. We've got a complete push through in the lane. So uh, that was, uh, if I remember correctly, five points for the home base. So that gives them uh, a total of whoop, whoop, that whoop, ten up, points. That uh, wraps up ten points in total for Rebel Rifles versus zero for uh, the Foundation, unfortunately. Amazing. Ten so, to zero. Um, now we got yeah. to see Foundation push back and get another ten points so we can go to sudden death. Uh, it's it's a big ask, uh, especially since this was done on the reverse, like on the harder of lanes to attack. Pushing south is definitely harder here. Definitely. I mean, uh, no, Tony, uh, the game's over because they took the base. Yes. So uh, the game's finished, sir. With that, we need a quick uh, the game is finished broadcast, please. And uh, what we're going to do then is we're going to go into the halftime where. Um, uh, we are going to change uh, sides, and Tony is going to switch some hexes around with crazy voodoo magic that uh, only admins can do. And then we're going to go straight into the second half with a...
<coughs> excuse me, with a count of 10 points for Rebel Rifles and 0 points, sadly, but a great fight from them, uh, for the Foundation. And maybe Foundation can turn it around, we'll see. I mean, home base captured here, we can see a home base being captured on the other side. So yeah, but... It, it, it's all to play for, don't get me wrong, and they're going to have 20, roughly 20 minutes to get everything set up, and we're going to give the teams 20 minutes to talk about tactics, get themselves reorganized, give our dev time to flip the points around, and uh, in that time we're going to go for a little break in a second. Yeah, because Isn't we you cast talk this about also like a... something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, I mean, if, if you're, just before we go for the break, right, I mean, if you're Rebel Rifles, you're doing fairly well. There's maybe a small issue where maybe you've got too many people in air on certain bases. I, I think when they were in this mature storage, had they gone full infantry, they would have, or, you know, and having only the bare minimum of air, they could have gotten the base first time. But yeah. for the most part, Rebel Rifles, they're doing great. If you're Foundation, what do you do? Because you're now attacking from Maltech plant. Yeah, but the first thing that I would do at, as Foundation now is to actually get to West Pass Watchtower, you know, in like the first 15 seconds or something, instead of thinking like, oh, well, we're three minutes into the game, uh, you know, let's move to the next base. That was what I think was what really put Foundation uh, onto, onto the wrong foot, because I don't think they realized just how quickly and how entrenched Rebel Rifles took West Pass. I feel that they 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 are just well, not being used fast to. Is quick. Yes, they're just but not it, used to this right now because on life, if you just play on life, of course there are times where you have to be quick, like everyone get to the warp gate, get in the galaxy, you know, as quickly as possible, sure. or whatever. But this is a completely new level of being quick and being precise. And rebel rifles, with their experience, we have to be, you know, honest here. Rebel rifles has the experience. Foundation doesn't have it. No, the advantage. They, well, they had the yeah, galaxy at the start. I they, wonder they if anyone knew the rules because it was they, like. Like, the rules is no vehicles except from allowed one galaxy. So yes. I don't even know if, if Foundation is fully off a with what the rules are because we saw the, the minor infraction. As, uh, as an, you know, the... let, let me just put on my voice and say, as an official organization member of the EU Community Clash, I can hereby attest that the Foundation has been briefed on all of the rules of this game beforehand explicitly. So they, they knew about the rules. And, I mean, if you don't utilize it or if you forget about it, can happen, can cost you a match. Are they going to pull it back, Farah? Uh, for the sake of entertainment, absolutely. I believe absolutely. in them. It's going to go 10 10 and. Um, and sudden you know, death. It's going to go to sudden death. But if you were a gambling man, I, I wouldn't you know, put your children up. Well, luckily. Most people here probably don't have children they want to put Because they, <laughs> they have good children. They have nice children. Children who watch and uh -huh. play Planetside 2. Right, so and with uh, that, let's go for the break then. Let's go for the break. We're going to have a quick 20-minute break. You're not going to hear anything from me. You're going to hear some nice music from the Planetside 2 soundtrack. Uh, see you guys in a bit. Yep, and we can uh, go back into the game. Now, uh, Tony... Uh, you're ready for the 30-second timer, aren't you? Farah, are you with me? Farah, Farah, come in. Oh, yeah, Farah. I am indeed here with you. I'm just having a look at what the two setups each team have. Wonderful. I'm um, going to head over to the Biolab. Tony, yeah, can, we can, get, the... uh, can we get the 30 seconds, Tony? Nice. There we go. So, looks like Rebel Rifles have got a galaxy on the pad. They're ready to yep. jump in. They're going to be fast, and they're going to pull air. But this time, however, uh, Foundation have a galaxy ready to go at my tech plant. And they are also ready to go. And the question is, who brings more people? I, I hear a very loud beeping. I hear a very loud beeping. Is that ominous? Mm, maybe. And that should be the start for us, actually. There we go. Someone was beeping at me. That is crazy. But yeah, they are, they're going to go really, really fast. But what are they doing there? They, it seems they have Bravo there Squad in the galaxy. Now Alpha Squad is joining in. They're leaving they're some people behind. They're all jumping in there for the Yeah, Bravo Foundation's Squad pulling going. reverse. So what's the Foundation doing? Foundation has one squad going at the galaxy, it's nine people, and they have their Bravo squad waiting at the vehicle pad. And the guy was supposed to pull a Sunder, but he pulled a Mag Rider. So Bravo squad's waiting for another vehicle. Oh, oh dear. Not oh the God. best start. Here we go. Sundra's pulled out. Now, so Bravo squad for Foundation is actually going on ground, which means half the platoon is going to be at least two minutes before they get there. Yep. Alpha squad is in the lib. Yeah, both galaxies are getting almost both at the same galaxies, time. But Rebel Rifles obviously dropping first, already capturing point And they're going to have more people, people I think. We've got, a, we've got a fight of the galaxies there. And see Galaxy down, oh, lost one man. Oh, 
down. Oh, did you see that? They hacked the vehicle pad. Rebel Rifles hacked the vehicle pad. Immediately pushed oh, so two Sundras. Oh, so they did it this time. Yes, two Sundras. One Sundra going to the uh, eastern side, one Sundra going to the western side. Captured point A, captured point C, capturing point B. And they've got air superiority Are there any on left mass. Over? Nope. There's some Venu and Bravo, but I think that's just because they can't get the cap. Yeah, yeah there, there's a couple of Venu and Bravo. The Vanu but coming in with a single Sundra. NC is coming in and throwing explosives. Now, there's some things we want to look out for. We want to see if any of these two uh, teams use smoke. We want to see if any of these teams use uh, more tracer darts or tracer motion sensors and also uh, EMP grenades, because I did not see that in the first half. Well, right now, the only smoke that I'm seeing is from that destroyed Foundation Sundra and that destroyed uh, Skyguard. Again, so. their Bravo squad came in. They chose no additional air support. They just brought Not one Galaxy, whatsoever. one Sundra, and now their Bravo squad is just getting ripped apart by air. We have a little squad of Foundation with a Max and two uh, squaddies at point B holding it. But I don't think they can hold it for long. They just lost one man. The Max is hit by a rocket. It's still the no. Max. Only the Max left now. Well, Rebel... Um Foundation is pulling fresh Sundra from uh, the NS material storage, and they might have the squad spawning. They've got one Sundra, one Mag Rider, but no anti-air asset. So, and this is this is the problem. This base is significantly more vulnerable to aircraft. Yes, and Rebel so, Rifle is completely dominating the air. And 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 trying to move vehicles or infantry, you know, up to Howling Pass is a nightmare because we can already see that Rebel Rifles they've hacked the the anti-vehicle turrets and they've got engineers with AV turrets on the bastions. I feel that Foundation desert. felt a little too happy with their Burster Maxes in the first round because they've done it again and brought in a Sundra with two Burster Maxes and a Mag Rider <laughs> against two Liberators with, you know, the it's crews not gonna who work know what here to do. Because no, they don't have work. the it height can't. advantage. Can't work. And they're already firing from within a, a behind a ridge in a pit. It's, it's, and it's just not going to work, especially now. I mean, that Mag Rider is already dead. That Mag Rider was uh, just wasted resources right now, sadly. <laughs> there's, there's a Rebel Rifle Infiltrator taking out the last Max from, uh, for the uh, Foundation. <laughs> In fact, he didn't need to, he's run away. Oh, and he just got air hammered. <laughs> Ouch. So all of um, Foundation now have been mopped up. I can't see any of them inside uh, Highland Pass, and when I look nope, at the population... Not. They have a single a single um, Skyguard coming in from Mao, just a single Skyguard standing there, not really doing anything. It they're seems spawning they have... in NS material, or abandoned NS officers. Yeah, they're officer. spawning in N abandoned NS officers, but what are they spawning as Burster Maxes? At more anti-air, and uh, I, again, this is um, debatable. I mean, if I'm in this scenario, where I've lost the you know the initial fight on Howling Paths and I'm back at NS offices for the second well, time. No, lost it for, for the second, the second time. time. There's 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 no pressure right now. There's no pressure about his NFs, so they can push forward. How they choose to push forward, they get air units, they get more vehicles, they get lots of lightnings, they get lots of sunders, whatever. But as soon as that the NC applies pressure, they abandon in offices. There's no reason they can't have an infiltrator with a wraith, or I've said it before, or uh, maybe one of their own scythes with ejector seat with an infiltrator and squad beacon deploy. Haven't seen um, the redeployment of platoon by squad beacons yet, even though they have them. They do have them, and everyone, they can't even if they want to because they're yes. building maxes. And but everyone does have it. Every, all of them are battle rank ten now, so m the options there, but they're just not doing it. And it looks like they're just setting up home at abandoned yep. NS office. Well, they probably figure that you know, like in the first half, you know, we couldn't take Howling Pass at all, but we really managed to defend that second yeah, base pretty well. But that's not going to win you the you round. Can't you can't win defense. the round by defending a base really well all the time, yeah. especially not when you're 12 points behind. So you're just giving away Howling Pass to the enemy for free, free and then points, they're going to yeah. attack. Yeah, they're going and, 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 and yeah, which means you need to take it back and again and again. So it's just not going to happen. And then abandon in its offices. You can't defend this base like you yep. did the previous one. It's a hellhole to defend. I, I feel that the foundation just. I I don't know if that's what they do on live servers, but I, I I feel that they're just that much more not just focused but just more comfortable in defending in having the enemy come to them instead of being the ones who attack a base. That they just don't really know how to approach it. Like, I mean, even the two defenses they did at the bases was just them rushing out of the spawn room. I mean, that's like a textbook base defense which you learn in, like, your yeah. first month of playing well, Planet. Well, I'm having a look at Howling Pass now, and I can see all the capture points have at least one, if not two, people on them. So even if you brought in, like, a stealth and you tried to prevent the hack or slow it down, 
they're all covered by one yep. or two people. Which and I can you stand, will notice. Which I can understand why they're doing that, because in the first half, it did cost them some time and an attack True. by having... Uh, Howling past back I mean, if you wanted to be pedantic, you could say, well, what they really want is tracer darts and all the capture point, and you could have like one engineer yeah. and one infiltrator on the air pad. Or the new the motion around. sensors. Or the more new motion sensors, but they're not, and for the, for the most part, I think they feel the opposition is going to do that, so they're fine with what they are. They've got a whole raft of engineers with engineer anti-vehicle turrets firing from Howling Pass towards um, abandoned Ennis offices. Rebel rifles, they're comfortable. And their air units are free to just bombard from distance. Or and fly foundation, over the foundation doing the old thing again, which they did last Sky time. Skyguards, four skyguards, yep. some infantry. I, I wondered, it's, like, it's I, I got an email from the foundation leader where he gave wow, me like a little overview. The, sorry, what? See, so, sorry, the the some very very skilled engineer shots. We have some skyguards on the reverse ridge to the west of the base that yes. are getting hit by some engineer turrets yes. all the way from the Howling Pass Tower. We've That's also no got the Reavers feet. taking That's it like out. one pixel in your screen, way off in the distance. Yeah, they're focusing more on um, the front of the base now, it seems so. But we've got yeah. Reavers taking out the Skyguard. Like, those Reavers are just sniping the Skyguards right now, not even getting The Liberator close. as well. The Liberator as The well. Rebel Rifle Liberator. Which well, we've seen the, what the uh, Liberators can do to the Skyguards, didn't we? Well, they're hitting the Skyguards, but he's at maximum range. The Skyguards can't hit him. So he's just uh, chipping away. We've got five Skyguards now, by the way. Five. And we've already lost one for the foundation. Six! Make that six. It's too six, defensive. Six Skyguards. I would love to see Foundation do something aggressive where this is a stalling tactic, and then they have some guys coming from behind, dropping in, driving in, galaxying in, whatever, and then beaconing in. Or just pulling tons of sunders and punching your way through in, but yep. we're just not seeing that. Whether the organization's not there, the imagination, or the leadership, or the will, it, it's just lacking. And rebel rifles um, are just a, a superior outfit at this time. I, I I do tell you, like I believe that Foundation just they're not very comfortable in attacking a base. Like they're just not used to having the entire map empty and having only 24 people to focus on, but who also exclusively focus on them. It is it is so easy on the live server to just, you know, go somewhere and people are focused on other stuff because there's so much going on. It's not just you yeah. and the other guy who wants to kill you. There's, like, the other guy who wants to kill you. There's, like, your friend who wants to kill them and so on and so on. But here, it's like a literal outfit versus outfit clash. And if you're not used to that... There's no other interference. Yes, you there's no rely. interference. There's like a you false, are, there's you have to be yeah. the interference. You can't rely on the Zerg or anyone else backing you up, but yep. defense isn't a bad thing. I mean, defending a capture point co when you're on the attack is still technically a defense because you're defending the capture points to get the attack, and that's fine. But it's, I have, I've yet to see them attack a base. Like, to be at a base that they are flipping and holding a point. Every single fight has just been on the defense where they own the spawn building. Uh, Foundation now set up their own engineer turrets, by the way, trying to snipe, I guess, the... Uh Engineer turrets of the Rebel Rifles. Yeah, can't Rebel just, Rifles, yeah, by the difficult. way, doing a textbook thing. They're re pre preparing. They've got Sandra's prepared and everything. Base is captured Who now. Who wrote the textbook? Uh, I think the textbook was wrote by Vanu and then translated into fascist speak by the Terran Republic and then turned into freedom burger speech by uh, the NC. I see. So what you're saying is the aliens wrote the textbook on warfare. Yes, is that, is that what you're yes. Saying? That is why, right. for example, there's no long-range artillery. Heretic yes, deciphered it first. There are there are and no weapons of mass destruction. There's no artillery and whatever because the aliens were like, you know what, that is just for losers. Like we're aliens. You, you, you know. say that right, but a little known fact: the Terran Republic scientists have actually uh, got an orbital strike. It's just not being deployed to the front lines yet. Do you it's, know that? It's because even fascism has a funny side. Uh, <laughs> You say fascism, I say legitimate government. <laughs> hey, I'm the German here, I'm not gonna say anything. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's well. focus back on the game. So we've got Rebel Rifles, again, you know, employing their Reavers, just kind of flying over the base. I mean, I see so much anti-air from the Foundation, I haven't seen a Reaver blow up. Like, I haven't seen a single Reaver blow up with, like, five Skyguards, three Burster Maxes. And no, it, Rebel Rifles is now just preparing, like, I guess a Sunderer attack? I guess that's what well, they're doing? With so many people on the defense at the next base, it is unlikely that they'll, they'll go straight into a leapfrog action. Yeah. Well, they so do have two vanguards rifles, again. Yeah, well, you, you can pull, because it's a three-point uh, large outpost, 
uh, you can pull uh, armor from here, like heavy armor, like uh, vanguards, big tanks. So I can yep. see them pulling it and using it to their advantage. Now, if I'm uh, foundation, one of the easiest things to help defend this base, because there's bad sundra points for the attacker, is to have AV turrets or uh, mag riders actually at the Mao um, base. The um, the mouth southeast gate as a sort of flanking fire. Yeah. None of the foundation is doing that at the moment. They're yeah. all in one point. So with that in mind, uh, rebel rifles can probably flank more to the north and spin round. And once they've got a noose set up and they have them pinned in the spawn room, it is incredibly difficult I, I do to have get to say, out and kill Sunday. I do have to say, I want rebel rifles to not just sit there on howling. I, I want them to move into this base because honestly, I've seen a lot of really good stuff from the foundation. I mean, maybe on the macro scale they haven't been you know as focused as rebel rifles but when it came to the actual engagements there were some really really great fights from the foundation some good attacks and I, it, it was just you know fun to look at and they've been really yeah. you know giving it their well, own well this like is where it's gonna matter i can see two vanguards now for rebel rifles just on the ridge line and having a look at the next base uh, you know but this this is where it's gonna really matter it's like how well can uh, foundation hold their oh, own. We just saw a reaver blow up, by the way. Skyguards killed their first reaver. Well, it looks like the uh, Rebel Rifles Vanguards are flanking yep. heavily. And here comes the, the Rebel Rifles Galaxy. Here comes the Rebel Rifles Galaxy dropping in. It's a lot of anti air, air on it. Flank. Yep, but it I doesn't matter. A couple of max. A couple of maxes, infantry. Yep. Yeah, they're pushing on the cat point. Foundation is uh, defending that cap point. Well, they've got a Lancer. That Lancer Lasher fire. Take out. Yeah, Lasher, Lasher, Lasher sorry. Fire their yeah, Lasher max. Fire. They've got a squad beacon down though, and it is on the far west, uh, east of the yep. base, so it's not going to be yep. the easiest thing to kill off. Oh, this is interesting. Um, the point. Foundation have just sent off their first Rel Stealth ATV to Howling Pass, so if they get the point back, he might be a nuisance. He's now driving off to Howling Pass. Seems uh, like they're I getting that point back, just as you said so. Yep. Neutral well, now. it's an easy counter push. It's very hard for you to hold it on yep. the first push because you can just group up and smaller push out. I wonder where the Rebel Rifle Sundra is because they had one prepared, <laughs> it's just not moving in. <laughs> one of the Rebel Rifle's Reavers killed their own squad beacon. <laughs> wow. Well, you know, blue um, and purple in the heat of the battle. <laughs> Rebel Rifle's now taking back the point, it seems. Yeah, but they don't have a squad beacon, and that's a critical thing, so they need to pass leadership. Yeah, they don't have a squishies. Sundra either. Where is that Sundra? Just a single guy driving it's a Sundra behind the attack? not driven up. They haven't brought them up. Um, now, if we look now at... Now, where oh, they that this is interesting. That one stealth infiltrator in the stealth ATV has actually deployed a squad beacon in um, Howling Pass. Now, he's been noticed by one Reaver. I'm trying to and find it. Where is it? It's in the, um, the far east side. Uh... East, north, nor northeast. Sorry, next to Charlie Point, and um, they've hacked one of the vehicle uh, turrets. Now the question is, this looks like a Bravo squad beacon, so it is a. Yeah, it looks like some of them. Oh, there it is. Yeah, in the middle of the tower. Yeah, he's actually taken over the uh, anti-tank turret too. Now the, the critical thing here is they haven't taken a point, and that concerns me because they're redeploying a lot of their forces and they haven't grabbed a point. So Rebel Rifles are in a very good position if they. And the reason why they haven't got it is because. They still haven't captured in it, abandoned in its offices, and this is bad. They should not have redeployed large number of people. They should have just kept just the infiltrator, and he should have waited there. Yeah. Once the base was saved and defended, that's abandoned in its offices, then he should have flipped a point yeah. and put a beacon down. Now, but uh, now Rebel, Rebel Rifles, rifles have, yeah, they now have a Sundra to the north, and that Sundra uh, can actually get sniped really easily by engineer turrets. Like we've seen that in the, the KOTV. entire Bravo squad for yeah. for Foundation is a Howling Pass. Trying to capture Bravo and Charlie, it's just not going to happen. They're going no, to have to go back. It's not going to happen, no. Um, Rebel Rifles are in a great spot here because they just need to defend against just Alpha Squad. And it doesn't look like they've got that many people. I mean, if you look at the population yep. numbers, um, it's 52 to 48, so the Venu have slightly more. I think some of Bravo's actually begin to redeploy and come back now. Well, Rebel Rifles now has, uh, has two Sunderers at Abandoned Ennis offices. And uh, they've One got only Alpha deployed. Squad there. Bravo Squad, as always, just pulling air at uh, Howling Pass, and they're just, uh, you know, taking well, care of it. Well, listen, the Bravo air. Squad is distracted. Their, their yeah. entire Bravo Squad's at uh, Howling Pass. It's not going to do anything. They don't need to worry about it. To be honest, there's no reason why any of the NC needs to be at Howling Pass. 
all of their assets need to be focused at abandoned yeah. Ennis office to make sure that point goes through. Because as long as they've got that point, it doesn't matter what's going at Howling Pass. They can have a party yeah. with clowns. Yep. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So the Foundation now splitting up their forces, sadly not even achieving anything. I want to see them bring back Bravo Squad. Do a push. They can push out this one squad. Like They can push out this one Rebel Rifle Squad and take the point they killed back. killed the first guy. They're so actually they're taking the point back as I, as I say this. Point is, uh, point is yeah, well, that's because the Alpha Squad for Rebel Rifles don't have the backup. They're basically fighting a, um, even numbers, if not outnumbered, yep. without any reinforcements. I didn't see any squad beacons. Now, here's the and question. That was a single infiltrator. That infiltrator just got killed, so the point is flipping back now. Where was the push from the VS there to help keeping that point alive? They're all in the spawn room. They're just very slowly pushing with one or two people. Well, <laughs> the tragic thing is that this is now going in... Um, no, no, they still have the cat point. There's, I see a couple of NC left over with an infiltrator, so... Yes. Again, Foundation needs to get more people back. They need to recall everybody from Howling Pass except from one person. But they still have Bravo Squad at Howling Pass. They still have lots of Bravo Squad at Howling Pass. I mean, if I'm going to go back here, I see... Um, and I'll give you a count in a second. They have four people, maybe five, still at Howling Pass. Honestly, you only need one person. Two of the, you know, at the most uh, at different places so you don't get both killed off easily. But they well, need to regroup and they need to well, take We're getting a nice back. push from Foundation now on the point. It seems they're actually capturing it. But yeah. ah, there's that in NC Max and just too many. Their air is backing NCs. them up. Yep. The Maxes are alive. The medics are there. The engineers are repairing the Maxes. Yeah, there's a good yeah, yeah. squad cohesion here. Whereas when I look at. Um, Foundation, they're either going in piecemeal or they're staying too clumped together on one point and getting bombed. Which is sad to see because it seems like they're just kind of demoralized. They, they've put up such good attacks at, um, at in, in the first half. And just really, really nice to look at attacks with good squad composition, maxes, and backup and everything to take those points back. There's a lot I, of um, like where, where is that now? going on the top there. Like, where is that now? Is, is my question. Well, they're trying to... I don't know, they're trying to flank round to the west and then drop down from the double building. But there's a Liberator in, up above, not being molested by anti-air, just pounding away against the Foundation. Foundation now and, doing and a good attack though, they're good, doing a good attack, clearing up true. that... Um, but well, Rebel but again, Rifles has a, a Stalker, so, sorry to interrupt you, Rebel Rifles has a Stalker cloaked infiltrator sitting directly on the point right now. Yeah, and the thing is, uh, Foundation still has four people at Howling Pass. Even if they grab the capture point, it's still a two-minute return yep. cap. There's four people doing absolutely nothing except from having a mad tea party and just, you know, being completely unproductive. Well, with Rebel Rifles moving in the Sundra now, of course, the reinforcements are closer than ever. Foundation did manage to grab the capture point they now. They did get the capture point, but are they going to hold it for three minutes? minutes? I mean, I well, can honestly, I believe it. I, be I believe it. I believe that <laughs> if they focus now, they can hold it for three minutes. If they focus yeah, well, now, if they just rush out of the spawn room immediately after spawning and bring in Max. It doesn't look like I it think because they can there's a squad beacon for Rebel Rifles on the top of the antenna, plus they have a Sundra in, plus they're surrounded by friendly air. I, it looks like a noose around um, Foundation. I, and the more Maxes they lose and don't get roused and come up, they're going to run out of resources and they're going to run out of Max Timers. Well, Foundation sitting on the point, they're bringing people out of the spawn room. They're not bringing well, as Resonates many people helps. as I want them to bring, but... The resonates definitely help. Yeah, they need. They just need to throw like what they need to have is like well, one you can medic. You from the spawn yeah, building. they need to have them. one medic in the spawn beacon. Throw a res grenade at the capture point, which you can easily do. <laughs> jump well, back in, get another one, and just keep no doing. Distance. Just keep yeah, doing. Yeah, so you could be a heavy assault, and you could just like you know, ex avionate, 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 yeah. avionate, or, or conch grenades avionate, or whatever. Avionate, you can throw yeah, exactly. res grenades and so on. Like that is something that works really, really well at this space. I'm actually looking forward to seeing. Uh, Things like that, tactics like that, being developed as the community clash, you know, like goes into the later games, because I can see that happening. Like, imagine having a dedicated res grenade medic who is just constantly throwing them out. Now, yeah. uh, right now, I see um, rebel rifles encircling the it's entire. It's forty base. seconds to go in this base, yeah. and rebel rifles have got a very strong hold. The thing is, one of the key differences when I talk about squad cohesion, cohesion here is that when I look at the NC Maxes, Rebel Rifles Maxes, I see a mixture of weaponry. One for anti-infantry, one for anti-vehicle, and yep. always at least one engineer following him doing repairing. 
by default always yep. being repaired. And Which there's a I nearby. did see as the foundation was fighting in the earlier bases and they were doing those counter pushes. They were they doing had the exact same thing. But they in had this it. base, they're not doing that. The Maxes are going on by themselves or they feel isolated. It feels like, yes, they've got infantry next to them, but it doesn't feel like they have a dedicated uh, engineer behind them repairing them. And that makes a huge difference when you go into a Max or Max fight or against other infantry. I do have to say, one thing that I really uh, wonder, uh, here's the facility capture, that's another two points for now, rebel rifles, so... We know that, um, okay, so basically, uh, Foundation has redeployed to Mouth South East West Gate, so it doesn't look like there's going to be a leapfrog attack uh, immediately. That's one of the things they could have done. I well, think do just they gonna really need to leapfrog if they completely own the air? Because that's something... The infiltrator with the stalker cloak has just done it on abandoned end. Have office. we seen, He's apart, and the apart point back. from that one tiny little rule transgression, which we're just going to say, you know, like that yellow card, have we seen Foundation really pull any proper air? Because I never see them pull sy scythes or anything. They're just completely really, leaving no. the air to the rebel rifles. Oh, there is a max on the capture point at Abandoned Ends offices and he's trying to find the infantry. All the infantry from Rebel Rifles are trying to find the infantry. He's on top of the cap point. Yes, yes he is. How can they not see him? You can't because of the oh, lighting. He the must lighting be having is having a hard time. Yes, right because now. of the lighting. I the can't lighting makes moving. it really hard. The VS guy's moving left and right. He needs to stop moving. And have you not heard of dark light? Get your pistol out. Get your dark light. Look everywhere. <laughs> they feel like complete noobs. What are you doing? <laughs> they can't, they can't do it. He's just sitting there. He's looking he's looking. He's looking straight at him. He's just like he's yeah. like it's is that an infiltrator? No, it's not. No, I'm just gonna walk away. He's not, now he's shooting randomly. He's just shooting <laughs> if I was randomly. An infiltrator, I would be doing. You call yourself a soldier? And every other <laughs> mock. <laughs> that Max is gonna see him. Come on, that Max has to see. He's not. But all they need is more infantry on the point. So if they get like two infantry on the point, it will flip back to NC, and the infiltrator can't do anything about it. This and is insane. And then all of the. Yeah, if they have um. He just flipped Rebel the point. He just a... flipped the point back. Oh, Rebel now he killed him. Now he got it. By the cap point at A. Yeah, the Max just took out the guy, so they're actually capturing him. Oh, the okay. So Rebel Rifles has a Sundra at the A cap point. I don't know how many infantry is there, but it's getting um, attacked pretty hardcore by uh, the Foundation. But the Liberator is trying to back, you know, give, provide support. And um, it looks like they're using the AV turret and the anti air turret on the top of actually the Maltech plant itself to give them extra, you know, firepower or whatever. Um, I can't believe that Rebel Rifle Center is still alive, even though it's critical red and burning. He's just driving further north around the hill. Yeah, and he deployed, gets out, turns into an engineer, is going to fix it straight up. Now, there's some NC at the cap point. I believe they've got it? Oh. Farah, do you think he broke it? Do, do I think what? Do you think he broke it? That Sundra? What do you mean? Oh, you must uh, not play NC, do you? <laughs> I, and this voice... Uh, Chat thing. I, I think, think I broke, I broke it. it. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yes, we got um, rebel rifles heavily entrenched in the A point building. Single Vanu Max now fighting, trying to kill an infiltrator. Uh, well, it's a long run across the bridge to the yep. A point, but Foundation's doing it. They're pushing for yep. A. They they found a really good spot there because the Reaver wasn't really looking. The Reaver now oh, actually nice landed. Here, turret. I can't believe. Why this is so stupid, Foundation had a Max go up against an Engineer turret, and he just stopped in the staircase, doing a one-on-one -on -one duel with the Engineer turret. He should have kept on walking, he should have had charge, ran past the Engineer turret, and then shot him from behind. Yep. Well, but then again, he might not be a very experienced Max player. Nah. I, it could be at the point where they've used all their Max timers, so anyone who has a free Max, go grab a Max. Yep. Right but now, I wouldn't even say turret. that the Foundation... Uh, right now, I wouldn't even say that the Foundation is, is really doing anything stupid. But I, what I think is just that they are heavily demoralized right now, and they're just kind of noticing that guys like well, what we're doing here. Drafts. Yeah, like what we're doing here is not working. Yeah, and it uh, it doesn't seem like they have a strong voice in the background saying right now like stay in the spawn room, group yeah, yeah, up, yeah, and yeah. now we they're go on. They're running out in bibs and bobs. They're running out in ones and twos, threes and fours. And the problem here is that you have the NC with the Sunder behind the capture point. You've got air, and now importantly, you've got the balcony. Had um, in that push just a minute ago, Re uh, Foundation managed to get to the A capture point, taken the A bag, they could have put an Alpha and a Bravo squad beacon on the balcony, meaning they do not need to spawn from the spawn building and run to the capture point. They could have just defended the capture point, but unfortunately they haven't. And they could have done that whole uh, reverse leap throw thing. Had they got the capture point back, they could have sent a stealth infiltrator to attack the abandoned NS offices. But it just looks like the NCR in, they've set up, they've got the Sundra, yep. they've got the air. 
it just doesn't look like um, there's any sort of unit cohesion or coherent push. If there's one thing we've seen right now is that once Rebel Rifles properly sets up in the building, it's very hard to get them out of there. They have, they are very, very good at keeping their people up and just, you know, entrenching in the position. I do think that Foundation is preparing for a little push there. I see two or three Maxes in their spawn room coupled with a few infantry. I, I think they're gonna, you know, uh, push out of there any second now. They do still have one and a half minutes to do a nice push. Yeah, get that but point let's back. be clear here. I mean, it might, although it might look as if they're making a mega push out, honestly, to me, it looks like they're window licking. They're just at the edge of the um, shields, just trying to get some cheap kills. Doesn't look like they're actually gonna do anything organized on a counter push. I think they've basically just given up. Let them grab the base in a minute, game over. Well, it's not game over, they have to go for the tech plan immediately. But it, it just feels like the will and desire to fight is gone. Oh, they just threw in another rest grenade there, bringing four people up in the back, but... Uh, oh no, two people? No, four people, but getting gunned down by just the uh, see, huge amounts of... there's people. only five people to the north of that capture point, I can see, or at least the dead... There's, there's, there's still a bunch of people in the spawn room. It's not a cohesive or combined attack. What they could have done is they, what, what they could do now is they could have one sp squad of, of foundation in the spawn room at uh, the actual uh, gate base, uh, and Mao then they itself? yeah, well at south gate, and then they take the other squad and put it into Mao, and they just attack it's you know from the run. north and the south. Yes, yeah. but there's lots of buildings and everything. I mean, you can do it, or you can put them in but it's harassers. No. Pull some I harasser. The pull the Sandra. Yeah, the cat's at the back because it yeah, looks like the base, end yes. seems to be a sir. Oh wait, we're seeing another push. We're seeing term. a last uh, second push, I think, from the from the VX. What are they doing in the spawn room? No, it was one no, they're guy. not pushing out. They're standing on the. Uh, and and the thing is, they've the got the balcony at the A point. So not only have they got all these air units just pounding yep. them away once they come outside the shield, they've got the balcony with the cover and the high ground fire. A facility so. captured. That's another two points for rebel rifles. So that gives them uh, nineteen points. You sure? Yes, they had 12 points going into the first one. They got 3 points for how they 12 passed. or 10? A 12. I thought it was 10. No, it was yeah. 12 because we actually didn't count the tower. Oh. And that was my bad. I incorrectly added that up. It's I also fault. incorrectly added it up. We're, we're incohominate maths. Blame me! Yeah. Just have a, like, now, a rolling. What I really on the want to see, like, I want to see the foundation. Oh, they pulled again. air. Look up. There's lots of scythes in the air oh, going on oh, right now. Oh, we finally now. got scythes. This, I don't know why they did it now, but it looks like uh, Foundation has decided to pull all sides. So we're in here for a treat. See how well their air group does. <laughs> they killed off that damned Liberator! <laughs> so that's one. <laughs> and the <laughs> second one isn't looking very good either. Uh, they've, they've got at least one Vanu Liberator, and it looks like they're blind. They really want to kill off the Liberator, which means the enemy Reavers are having um, an easier time on yep. uh, Foundation Scythes. It really should be Liberator and Liberator yep. and Scythe and Scythe. Problem, uh, of course, is that once those Liberators go down, the crews just spawn at Howling Pass well, immediately. Well, Rebel Rifles liberator. have counterpulled. I can see yep. more Reavers yeah. being spawned out. Yet they're spawning fresh Reavers, fresh Liberator. I mean, it was impressive, but I can only see one Scythe left alive. One Scythe and one Liberator. There's a single VS Liberator now, which is gonna be a quick fodder for all He's the hiding. Um, is that a Gal? There's a that Galaxy. Re that Reaver Galaxy survived. Tech plan. That is a hero, Reaver. That is a hero of freedom right there. Now, look in your map. Is there anyone inside the Tech Plant yet for the NC? Yes, there is. There is one Infiltrator yes, and a Heavy Assault is. actually at the Cat Point. They are waiting to flip it, but it looks like they made a counter hack at Mouth Southeast Gate, and the NC have taken it back. So it's 10 seconds before they can start the cap on Mount Tech Plan. Yep, four seconds. Three, two, one, bam. Well, we got three people from Foundation trying to get the capture point back. Yeah, we've got a single light assault moving into the uh, A capture point in the Tech Plan now. Yeah, we have a medic for uh, Rebel Rifles. He got picked off. But the interesting thing here to note is that there's not very many uh, rebel rifles, but they are holding the balcony. Yep. Well, against a single max, which I think is going which to be able to Which grenade and the AV is running away. The max is at half health, so it depends. That's one dedicated medic rezzing even though he's right next to a max. I'm not sure I'm a fan of if I'm a medic and there's a guy in front of me who's about to kill me. Do I spend half a second either shooting him or half a second resing the guy so that when I res the guy, then he can kill him? 
uh, it's debatable. I'd probably get, take care of the threat before I res my teammates, unless... And if you don't have enough time to res, throw a res grenade. If the guy's right by your feet, and you think it's a waste of resources, yep. well, what's quicker? Throwing a res grenade, then shooting, or resing the guy, and then have your pants caught down as you then Now, take Rebel a Rifles actually well. made it onto the capture point, but can you check real quick, did the Foundation actually manage to do a back cap again? Because they, they are not actually... They the did. Point. I'm looking at the minimap, and uh, Perfect. they have... Perfect. Uh, but I don't see any of the platoon there, so it looks like the air group has dealt with it, and they have, and they've got the point back, and it's another 10 ah. seconds. It was a light assault, so... No, it was an infiltrator, so... Uh, I have to give, I by the way, I have to give big props to the Foundation for using a lot of lashers. By the way, we don't see enough lasher love. <laughs> and when I was playing Vanu, I absolutely loved that gun. So I'm just, you know, just Foundation, my heart goes out to all your lasher guys. And they're um, capturing the point, Rebel Rifles on the point. Yeah, if I had a Stalker it. Cloak, I would run from the Mao spawn building. That's probably how they're getting there so easily. Yes. They're probably just running from the spawn building straight south to the Mao southeast gate and then flipping it. The uh, thing is, what's, uh... <laughs> Rebel Rifles, Rifles now has a Wraith flash on the capture point. So they actually drove up. The vehicle terminals, have they hacked the vehicle? They have hacked the vehicle yes. terminals. Now this is an interesting yes, point. They because they've... and only one of them's alive, but it's enough. This is where you pull out a harasser with a fury, or two harassers with furies, because they're nimble enough to either camp. Because oh, now here comes the foundation out of the tunnels with a little push. Yeah. Out of the tunnels, if you had a harasser with you know the fury, yep. you could pound them to death, and you can also drive that thing with a little bit of creative uh, maneuvering back up to the cat point or back up into the balcony. But here's my question: what? You come out of the tunnels, you do a push on the on the point. Why are you doing it with four people? This is the thing, there's not enough people. If they're gonna no. do this as one organized team, they all go underneath the underground tunnel from the spawn room, they all come up the back, yep. they take the jump pads up, they secure yep. the balcony, then they secure the capture point. I, I really feel that this is yeah. not like a lack of, uh, of, of of knowledge or whatever, or, or you know, like, a, like some kind of gameplay stupidity from Foundation. I really think it is a lack of morale right now, and just everyone is really, really... Or following orders, or saying well, like, everyone honestly, in the spawn room... I just, I just feel like everyone, like from the leader to the normal soldier right now is just heavily demoralized, you know, just by how far they are behind and how they have their second home base taken I, they're right They're just now. playing it out. I, yes, I can see they're just playing, playing it out. out. Which, and, which and is sad because they did. Now this, they're pushing as a team. They, they the did these amazing, like, clutch saves in the first half time, and I was like, "Yes, Foundation, you know, like, get in there, get that point." And now they're just—I want to see that again. I want to. They have a ton of yeah. saves now, just but crashing the, the, the sides now. I mean, it was a clutch last-second save, but let's understand that the base are playing. Oh, here comes a big push, though. Here comes a big oh, foundation. Luke push. said they were listening. They actually do have a harasser with a fury camping that up teleporter. So yep. they're listening to our stream for advice, <laughs> or they can read my brainwaves. Uh, well, they actually, they actually got two. They actually got yep. Foundation was listening to me too. Oh, here comes the revive grenade. All of those oh, people. Oh, oh, oh the horror. Oh. God. And, and you know what's even worse? If you're TR, you got a high exp explosive prowler. Yes. You run over to the side, then lock down. Yes. It's juicy. This is the part of anyway. life where if you see this, you just kind of turn off the game and have to take a minute to, you know, or just get, get oh, that blood screw bath this, out guys. Of let's mind. go to the bio lab. Yeah, let's you know. just go to the bio <laughs> lab. <laughs> let's just go to, let's go to <laughs> Esamir. But yeah, it's like, I don't know, I'm, I'm really sad about that. I wanted to see Foundation do a nice little push. It seems that Foundation listened to me okay, and was so like, we can do it. But then those uh, harassers, you know, four just minute, took yeah. out. There's four minutes and 20 minutes seconds of the cap, right? Going through the tunnel clearly isn't worked because they're doing it all the time. They know where they're coming from. They've got three harassers with uh, one AV and two, um, yep. uh, you know, Fury to oh, catch me off. Rebel Rifles so using their Galaxy, now, by the way, to a Liberator and a Scythe out there. The next option, right, is to go from the spawn building as a team, and the key here is as a team, and they're not doing that, into the SEU generator room. Then you run across the walkways to Banana, and you regroup in Banana. I think there might even be an underground teleport room that will take you into Banana. I'll just double check that. There is. There's an underground walkway that takes you straight into Banana. So you go uh, underground wait, I'm, tunnels. I'm, I'm, getting like, I'm getting like a transmission here. Yes, yes, Banana is actually the technical term for that building. He is using it correctly. Oh, the, the curve. Everyone knows what Banana is. And no, you don't know what Banana is. You're not MLG. Right? <laughs> that's now, true. Anyway. That's true. Well, we're I, not as a MLG. Caster, we are... I suppose I should explain certain elements. Yes. The underground tunnels, there is what leads into what looks like the Banana building, because it looks like a banana. And I am showing that building right squad, now, by the way. Safe from enemy air, and then you can run to the double door entrance. The double doors on the ground floor that are on the east side of the Maltech plant. It's a short run with enemy air, but it doesn't look like they have much, and then you can get in to the double door side, and then you can go up the staircase. There's no vehicles. Heck, there's no infantry watching you. So, 
that's another way of getting inside because right now all of the NC are on the balcony and they're watching yep. the um, the tunnel that leads up to the VB area. You I'm can't trying go to that find Foundation. Where are they right now? Foundation from the looks of the minimap. It, oh, okay. Look at the warp gate. They're bringing in three galaxies from the warp gate, and oh. they've got a couple of Alpha Squad oh. stragglers. I don't know what they're doing here. Uh, maybe they're just trying to have a ramathon. I, I don't know if they're still taking this seriously with two and a half minutes to go. They could drop on the balcony and attack from the rear, but it's only Bravo Squad, not Alpha. They've pulled some air assets as well. I see a yeah, they had those earlier. Liberator. Yeah, taking out uh, Rebel Rifles air because one, in, one out of twelve, out. one out of twelve, nine out of twelve. So the first two galaxies are just dummies, and we have Bravo Squad, which is nine out of twelve, landing on the I see a, air yeah. pads. Beautiful, balcony. beautiful green, by the way, on those on those um, uh, galaxies. What the galaxy just flew into the wall? Okay. Yeah, I'm not. I used... Wow, I just that was a drop. Them out that's a there. bad drop. He just. He's dropping them partially on the ground, partially on the top. So they're just taking their height advantage, and now they're going in the lower vehicle underground bay. Those harassers from... Yep. I don't understand that. Rebel Rise have just turned around. And they're easily killed off now. Something has... Well, I mean, harassers. they're going in for the bottom now. They're going in for the bottom foundation, but... Yeah, but... That was a bad drop. Like, ground. that was not planned. They're getting picked off from all sides. I mean, the Rebel Rifles, it takes two seconds for them to decide, all right, they're not coming through here, they're coming yeah. from this other direction. Let's drop down and pick them off from all sides. Yeah, which is what they're doing right now, yeah. It is exactly what they're doing. There's no squad beacons. I don't understand why they didn't put in a squad beacon before they ran inside. I think uh, that drop was just completely thought otherwise. Like, maybe there were some technical difficulties on, like, the Galaxy Pilot or, or something. Or maybe the Pilot or something. They could have flown into the balcony cap area. They could have flown onto the could air have. pad top. They could have dropped in the middle. So many places they could have dropped for advantage, but no, they dropped half-heartedly, kind of spread yes. over, and then went in from the ground. So. I feel totally, that was totally unintended. There's a VX, like a tiny VX Max push right uh, now through the and tunnel. timing's oh, wrong. Tiny is that wrong, was because that's actually that a, a lot. That's exactly. actually a lot. So Bravo Squad made a failed push, and now Alpha Squad's making a push. It wasn't the same time. If this was a simultaneous attack, it might have worked. It might have been But it's beautiful. not. Uh, so it means that the defenders have enough time to deal with one threat, then counterbalance and defend the That NC on the turret just smiling. <laughs> well, he's got a lovely line of sight from the cat point on that jump pad. He does. But those lashers oh, are actually look, really good. Oh, he just died, but he was picking everyone else off. Well, they've got the balcony, and now they're pushing on the cat point. Uh, NC are being hemmed into the one cat point, and it's the max they need to deal with, and that's the problem, because he's actually... Well, he doesn't have an engineer backing him up, but... Nope. A couple of NC stragglers need to get picked off. I don't know what that Max is doing. He needs to go in and kill them all off. I don't. I don't know. Specifically, that medic. Shoot the guy with the red cross. Well, here Screw comes the Geneva Convention. Yeah, here comes the uh, no. here comes the rest grenade though. Re Reaver just tried to bring in a Sandra with a gate diffuser. It does not work. <laughs> it does not is work. It out? Oh, it is, yes. Well, you can still you can still MLG Yulo jump on the site. You can. You oh, can, but you Mal's can't gone. because the facility is captured. Which ends yeah, the match. GG. That's another five points for Reaver, putting us to so twenty-four points. Wow, twenty-four zero. Twenty-four to zero, a dominating victory, point-wise for the Rebel Rifles. But I do have to say that Foundation, there were at the end they fell apart. It was a morale thing. I'm calling it. It was a morale thing. I'm pretty sure that T Volpe is going to show us some more morale, stuff leadership, but. organized control, yeah. disorganized labor, whatever you want yeah. to call it. Rebel Rifles seem to have a better control yeah. over their team, but whereas the other guys were straggled. The foundation, it just felt that there was no yes. perfect timing or the cohesive view of the squad was, was lacking. Yes, this was like a battle of experienced, competitive players against someone who was doing this for the first time. But I do have to say to Foundation, there were some great things that were being shown. Like those clutch saves were fantastic. There were some yeah. really, really cool... There was some brilliance in there. I'm, I'm saddened that it got muddled and some people who have watched this game or who will be watching this game in the uh, recordings are going to say like, oh my god, Foundation was terrible. In my eyes, they were not. They played a very good game. They gave it their all. It just wasn't enough against the Rebel Rifles today. Anyway, with that, we're giving over to uh, T Volpe for the aftermatch interview. Oh, okay. This was okay. a 24 to 0 for Rebel Rifles. My name is Klaika. I was your caster today. With me was Farah. And thank you so, very, very much. Yep. Cheers, guys. For having us. T Volpe, you're on. It's a hell of a match, guys. Uh, Fuzzbucket and Death Sibius, if you could join me on the landing pad at Howling Pass Checkpoint, please. Be right there. Fuzzbucket, how's your uh, connection doing? Can you uh, just give me a 1-2-1-2? One, two, one, two? 
He's not in server at the moment. We'll just All have right. to wait and see. All right. Well, in the meantime, I think uh, Darth Sibius, uh, uh, why don't we just uh, start catching up here? So, yeah. just need to say, I mean, uh, at the beginning of both halves, you guys were Johnny on the spot right over there at Howling Pass. Lots of air. Clearly something you guys learned in your first match versus KOTV. Um, um, how do you, you feel about that? that? Uh, I'm, I'm very happy with the, the way our guys have, uh, have done tonight. Um, we figured that after the KOTV match, um, getting that point with the uh, dominance straight away is the key to winning that winning that base. Um, actually, uh, it's something we tried differently against Red October, and we failed. Um, so it, it kind of just cemented the fact that yes, getting on that point as quick as possible is uh, is the key to key. As soon as you've taken this middle base, um, it weighs very much heavily in your favour in regards to actually uh, taking the rest of the stuff. So yeah, I'm very very happy about the guys and. Uh, Grats to uh, the foundation, man. They uh, they put up some really really good scraps there, um, especially in the first half. Like really really and, good and, keepers and atolls. And first bucket, are you back with us? I am back. Ah, excellent. You sound a lot better now. Oh, sorry Say, about uh, that. Nah, no worries. Hey, during that first half, it's really unfortunate that you guys uh, fell to all that overwhelming air from uh, Rebel Rifles. How'd you? What, what was going on there? I mean, you guys got in, you got down on a point, but you just got kind of wiped out. Uh, do you feel oh, like no. you didn't bring enough air? Is that a regret? And if so, how come in the second half you guys didn't bring in more air to combat that? Uh, well, like, well, like, we thought, you know what, Rebel Rifles, they'll probably bring maybe four or five Reavers. I didn't expect what twenty. That was that was a lot of reavers and a lot. We of had uh, we had nine reavers up, I think, with two liberators. No, uh, so that threw us off guard tremendously through the first half. Uh, for the second half, uh, we thought, you know what, we've not got any what you call pro pilots. So they thought, let's start out the squad solely dedicated to sky guards uh, and support sunderers. Hmm. Um, but that obviously didn't turn out uh, that well. Well, yeah, it was interesting seeing you guys. Uh, uh, the first half, you guys pulled the Sunday on the hill with tons of Burster Maxes. Then you had the Sky Guards. And then in the second half, it looked like there was a very similar thing. Uh, you guys pulling lots of Sky Guards from the spawn room. Um, but unfortunately, it just didn't seem to work for you guys. Uh, that's, that's really unfortunate. I do have to say, as, uh, as great as Rebel Rifles played, I need to give the, v <laughs> the MVP to your lone uh, infiltrator at, uh, sorry, where was it again? NS Material Storage. NS Material Storage. Oh, we watched him on the stream. Office, it was abandoned in his office. On the, there we on the go. Cap point. Sat right. on the cap point with the stalker cloak for about a minute. Absolutely <laughs> amazing. <laughs> we yeah, have we, never uh, seen anything like it. We were chuckling like you wouldn't believe. And, yeah. and just tons of rebel rifle, uh, you know, heavies and maxes running around the point. Couldn't see the one infiltrator sta literally standing on top of the point, so hats off to him. Do you, by chance, know who that is? You want to give uh, him that, a shout-out on the stream? That was Flan Baconart. I must say, Baconart, we absolutely love you, because uh, in our team speak, as you can imagine, it was getting a bit um, flustered after our attack after attack just got completely tranced by Rebel Rifles. And they're all sitting there, and just suddenly through the scene, there's Baconart's wee voice of, I've got the point. <laughs> <laughs> and it was it was for like he, he, oh, it was, his antics um, j really did make that uh, the best one of the better games I've played for quite some time. <laughs> so could hats I, off uh, to Baconer. Could I just jump in on that one? Um, yeah, hats off to that infiltrator. Um, we uh, we started pushing on uh, Mars Southeast Gate, realizing that that point hadn't been uh, they'd flipped back to you guys. Um, so we sent a couple of people back, and none of them had flashlights. So we were like, a we were basically seeing... like thirty seconds to a minute of going, <laughs> "Where is he? Where is he?" And then a lot of screaming and TS saying, "Everybody equip um, expletive, expletive uh, flashlights." So, oh, yes. uh, um, but yeah, grass to that guy, man. Uh, oh, I'll, I'll let him know that you're you're, you're uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> it was it was really fantastic. Say, Fuzzbuck, can, can you join me on the uh, landing pad here with uh, Darcibius? Yeah, I, I just tried to do that. If you noticed um, someone falling off the landing There's... pad, that was me. All right. That was uh, yeah, I, I, It seems I to be quite was... busy up here. Yeah, I thought it, it was seems... light assault. Yeah, yeah, it seems we have some <laughs> traffic going on on the landing pad right now. <laughs> well, uh, nom nom nom, Bacon, you get, the, uh, you get the MVP of the match. Well done, sir. And it's uh it's really good to hear that you guys got some you know high somebody keeping spirits high, 
uh, keeping people light and all that kind of stuff. This is, uh, got to keep in mind, this is just a game. It's really unfortunate that uh, you guys did get a bit steamrolled by uh, Rebel Rifles, though. Uh, so, Darcibius, is there uh, anything that you'd like to add about, uh, you know, basically it looks like you've learned a lot from your Red uh, October incident last week. You came back strong, you pushed through, and uh, you dominated both halves. Anything uh, you want to end with? Yeah, I'd just like to say a big thanks to the uh, to the guys in Rebel Rifles who participated tonight. Um, there was a lot of good organisation, so hats off to them. You know, they they really earned this victory. Um, uh, hats off to the foundation, man. You guys, uh, you guys really did put up some fights uh, that, that had us on the ropes a couple of times, and really thinking about how we could uh, attack um, certain bases. So yeah, congrats on that, guys. Indeed. And uh, Fuzz Bucket. Uh <laughs> as I, as sorry as I am to say this, do you have any uh, last words? Oh, I, I, I would like to say yet yeah, again, hats off to Rebel Rifles. That was some absolutely quality play, um, and it was really, really enjoyable. Um, in one of our previous uh, competitive um, debuts, uh, we ended up playing against the Knock Air Squadron, and whilst they are great players, um, fighting against their squad wasn't that fun. But um, I must say, fighting against the Rebel Rifles their squadron. It was terrifying, but it was absolutely a, it was a great experience. I'm uh, glad and, um, oh, you lot should be really proud. You did you did good. I'm sure our pilots will be very happy to hear that. So. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, uh, you gentlemen are both uh, really well played. Uh, and uh, sorry, just tripped up a little bit there, but uh, really great sportsmanship from both of you guys. It's great to see communication between you two after such a, an interesting and intense match. Um, before we head off to the stream, I just need to give some shout-outs. I want to thank Tony from Procebian. He's the floating Max, uh, if you see him around in the stream. He uh, helps us out flipping the points. He sends off the uh, all the alerts during the game. Uh, helps us coordinate everything. Thank you very much, Tony. Casters were Farah and Kleika. you got to love their uh, velvety voices and play-by-play -play action. Well done, gentlemen. Uh, and it's all tend to be coordinated by Padawan Ichi, who uh, you haven't heard on the stream, but he'll be in here one of these days, I'm sure. <laughs> Maybe. I also need to give a shout-out to Steel Dragon from INI. He just uh, finished the PS2ComClash.com website. You guys got to head on over for all the infers, uh, info on all the different uh, brackets and incoming games. That's PS2ComClash. That's two M's in com. And uh, don't forget to follow us on Twitter at PS2ComClash as well. For all you EU people who are late night night owls, you can stay up for the US match. It's at 8 p.m. CST. We're going to have Jenk Squad Alpha versus Sturm Grenadier. So, uh, and that one's going to have all the great US crew. You're going to want to make sure to head on uh, over and hear that if you're up late or catch the stream tomorrow when it's up on Twitch. And as always, uh, get in touch. We're always looking for new outfits to play for the next uh, season. And yeah, sacrificial with that, killing. sacrificial killing. Uh, of course, before we go up, we also have to thank our wonderful host for tonight, T Volpe. Thank you very much for hosting, man. <laughs> oh, thank oh, you. Been a pleasure. Well, unfortunately, uh, Fuzz Bucket, Darcidius, you know, I think we just gotta we gotta take care of them. Well, hey. oh no, thank you. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> All right. And with that, ladies oh, and gentlemen, yeah. we're off. Take care, everybody. We'll see you next week.